All right, hello. Today is Wednesday, September 13th, 2023, and you're listening to the Ask a Christian podcast. I'm your host, Nate. Today, I, pr- I promise I don't have a problem with Catholics other than, you know, doctrinal uh, and theological disagreements. Disagreements, n- not necessarily, or eh, would that be a problem? I don't know. Anyway, the point is, I don't hate Catholic people. I promise. Um, for whatever reason, Chris has been on a terror, and uh, I don't even disagree with, uh, you know, some stuff I disagree with about his issues with Catholics, but I mean, even the stuff I disagree with, um, you know, he could say it a little nicer, but he is his own person. I'm not a micromanager like that, even though I try sometimes. But anyway, so this may sound like Catholic bashing, but um, apparently in his own way, he is trying to uh, correct the error of their ways as he sees them. Anyway, so we we get into that for a little bit and talk about his recent um, bout with uh, the Catholics in the Ask a Christian Discord server. Look for the link to join if you'd like. Go to the uh, Chris Fighting channel, and you'll be able to see all the fun stuff behind the scenes. All right, so we spent about, I don't know, 10, 20 maybe minutes doing that. Eh, like 15. Anyway, and then we get on to how, you know, white people are bad because reasons. And uh, then we take a small, small break to talk about the difference in sinners and saints um, are... are from a Christian lens, are we sinners who are now saints in the eyes of God, or are we still sinners who are just justified in the eyes of God? So anyways, we talk about positional justification and uh, standing in that sense for a little bit. Then we go right back to, uh, you know, the us white devils, um, who I'm 0.02% black, so, you know, there's that. I would not be me without that part, so I guess only most of me is white devil. So we talk about reparations. And this is mostly, as far as I can tell, um, I, I think identified Christian. Um, I think there's, there's, you know, Michael, the resident Canadian atheist, shows up a little bit. But uh, the people largely in this discussion are identifying as Christians, at least. So we talk about reparations and the difference in uh, race relations. And then just slavery. Just all of it. So, um, as a sensitive topic as this is, I think we do a pretty decent job. There's a couple people that I have to help to the audience because... Um, well, you'll hear. But um, anyways, it goes about how you'd expect. Ah, maybe, go, maybe it goes better than you'd expect. Anyway, uh, the point is, um, the ultimate point. I didn't, I didn't make this point. I thought about doing a separate video, but I'll just say it here. So when it all comes down to it, look, uh, slavery is bad. Every, at some point on earth, like pretty much everyone, has, every race or system or government has had a hand in being slaves and being slavers. So pretty much no one on the face of the earth um, is, is immune from that. Everyone has had a part. Um, some longer ago, some newer, some currently. So, uh, yes, uh, whatever the government makes promises to, we get into that in a little bit. They should honor the promises. If, if they don't, um, you know, 200 years is too long to wait to seek agreements. Uh, agree, to seek agreement? To share a grievance. Anyways, 200 years is too long to right that wrong. Um, at least... Some of the people think so. Um, and, and there's mixed reactions from, you know, different races. So it's not all like, you know, KKK versus Black Panthers. Uh, you know, there, there's a diverse diversity of thought on this issue, which is the greatest diversity, and that should be prized. And I do. Uh, I, I do like diversity of thought. Um, anyway, so so the ultimate point, I think, is, look, what happened in the past was bad. Um, you know, I'm, I'm except for the black part of me, sub-Saharan West Ghana and African, um, Nigerian, uh, what is it, sub-Saharan, I don't know, ask me for my ancestor, or a 23 and me later. Anyways, um, sub-Saharan, Ghana, Nigerian, I think, West African. Anyway, except for that part of me, I'm almost all Irish and English. So does that mean I should petition the Irish government for a potato for the ills that were visited upon, you know, that part of my people hundreds of years ago? I'm not going to bother with that. That time has come and gone. So anyways, not to say that bad things didn't happen. Bad things happen to everyone. It rains on the just and the unjust alike. Take a message from Job. Some people try to invoke Job for for their own agenda, but let's take Job for the story it is. Bad stuff happens to good people, and good stuff can sometimes happen to bad people. That's the way it is. Deal with it and get over it, because at some point, pride and ego and selfishness is going to be your problem, and it's not a bunch of white people standing in your way because you think they're all KKK. Um, whoever you are, um, whoever fits that you, um, 
it's not going to be us standing in our way. It's going to be between you and God and sin, because at some point you're going to be trying to relitigate the past at the expense of missing the present slavery that's taking place, the human trafficking at the border all around the world in Ukraine, all these other places where like real time atrocities, like there's probably be people being raped and murdered and trafficked in, in hardcore slavery right now. Like, I don't know how we assign a number to that, but probably more than one in the time I've, I've been speaking. Probably like 10, because I speak a lot. Maybe 100. We don't know. The point is, it's happening right now. So if you're trying to worry about your grievances from 200 years ago, 150 years ago, um, yeah, you were wronged, and whoever you are. Um, so if you're a black person who was a slave owner, you weren't wronged. You should probably pay reparations if that's the case. If you're a black person who was a slave, yeah, that sucks. Um, you know, don't wait 150 years. Uh, you know, if you're a white person who is a liberator, you should get an award. If you're a white person who's a slave owner, you're bad. Anyway, the, the, the amount of impossibility that it would take to even prove who was on which side, and then what about people that had both? What about people that had a lineage of slavers and slavees um, on, on, in their family history? What do they do? Transfer the reparations from one bank account to another? They, they pay from Wells Fargo and receive it in Bank of America? It's, it's just, it's, it's can't be done in a way that's not going to actually start a civil war. Um, what can be done is uniting of all races and focusing on the present and current slavery today, take our losses, be like, I'm not going to get paid back for my family's potato famine. Um, you know, some black people who were slaves are, uh, who you know, like generations removed, who, who had ancestors who were slaves, they lost. They're not going to get, uh, you know, the reparations they want. But what we can do is come together, unite, and stop you know, try to put a dent in the current actual slavery happening now. And at some point, pride is going to get in the way because you think you're owed something. And while you're worried about your grievance, you're letting all these other people in real time slip through the cracks of slavery and rape and forced labor and all this other stuff and murder for amusement. Um, so that sucks. You're a bad person if you do that. Um, not saying we can't do both and can't walk and chew gum at the same time, but that wasn't brought up. So. Well, I mean, it kind of was brought up, but it was brushed over. So keep that in mind. So <laughs> if I'm somehow self-canceled at this point, um, you know, everything I say, I, I stand by, and I think so does everyone else. We should be able to have pressing conversations about sensitive, hot-button issues that are taboo or you don't want to talk about, or if you air a different op opinion, you're on the wrong side of history or something. We should be able to have these conversations and champion diversity of thought. Um, and if you can't convince or win someone over with your argument, get a better argument. Don't get louder. Get a better argument. Um, and if it just can't be done, it can't be done. Um, you'll know it when it happens. Um, anyway, so <laughs> have fun with this. <laughs> I now present you Christians fighting about race. Oh, and also check out the Ask a Christian book on Amazon and check out the Ask a Christian store to support this. Uh, I was just helping some of our Roman Catholic friends understand a little more about church <laughs> history. Define help. I mean, causing massive cognitive dissonance and like, I don't know the answer to that question. I'm going to have to think about that. Because when I asked them about um, the Pope in the, um, this is my one of my favorites, it's called the Cadaver Synod. Sounds good, sounds right? Nice. Sounds great. Uh-huh. Yeah, so what they did is there was a previous um, Borgia Pope. This is in the Renaissance, right? Yeah. And so Pope Stephen X dug this guy's body up seven months after he had died, pulled him into the papal see, and put him on trial for buying and selling the papacy because at that time, if you had enough money, you could be Pope which is pretty cool, I guess. Um, I, I think I read that in the Bible somewhere. Yeah. You Was that the Sermon on the Mount? Mount? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's, it's right there. Um, so, you know, they, they, were, they were trying to get a hold of like, hey, you cannot buy and sell the papacy anymore. Stop it. And so they put this guy on, they put this guy on trial. And my question for my Roman Catholic friends was, so all popes, because they are members of the church, right? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, well, obviously they're the Pope. They're in good standing. They do all the sacraments. Um, so they get to go to what what they call heaven is the beatific vision, right? So that's Catholic heaven. 
And so I was like, so, so was this dude in the beatific vision? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, well, what happened after he was condemned and anathematized in his trial after he died? Did he go to hell after that? And they were like, uh. And I'm like, yeah, like, seriously, like, what's, what is the Catholic Church's stance on that? Did the dude, like, get yanked out of heaven after seven months and then just get thrown into hell? Because the church declared him a heretic <laughs> and anathematized him, and they're just like it's a double I it's a double edged sword, right? Like, like if you want to appeal to church tradition, to Catholic church tradition for why Protestants are bad and Catholicism is good, I mean, you know, you also got to take that tradition too and swallow it like a hard pill whenever uh, you know it gives Catholics some problems. Um, and it, the, you it's know, also I, I hate lose. Yeah, like I, I hate way less on Catholics and Christos, but <laughs> funny, I was just reading for the current religious articles to try to get us away from Catholic bashing. But um, Chris, <laughs> to my chagrin, um, the top headlines are a picture in, let's see, Portugal, Portugal's wine country, that has a giant ox with a bunch of monk-like people pulling, one may say, graven images or idols. And the headline is, Ox pulled floats with sacred images of Mary draw thousands to Portugal's wine country procession. Nothing weird about that. Um, don't know how many people are you know praying to Jesus, lifting holy hands to heaven. Uh, let's see. Uh, Vatican opens up a palazzo built on ancient Roman ruins and houses its secretive, highly secretive tribunals. Was that in the uh, Sermon on the Mount too, or is that where Jesus feeds the fishes, where he talks about how tribunals by the church are cool? Um, Let's see. Anyway, so yeah, those are the headlines. The so I guess we're it's in there in the apocrypha somewhere. I guess we're not getting away from that. I just you know it's funny because like sorry Catholics. I think that the current climate of evangelicalism, we want to think that Roman Catholicism is a Christian religion um, because it's nice because it it's we're being nice and what people don't understand is like. This institution has been the locus of human suffering in the world for thousands of years. And, uh, I mean, there would be, without the Catholic Church, there would have been no Holocaust, for instance. So, you know, you can go there. Um, I'll let you defend those claims on your own to anyone that would like to join the Discord server and join the Chris Fighting channel. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, a bunch of Roman Catholics joined the Discord server. It's really funny. I'm friends with all. Oh, really? Are <laughs> would they say the same thing? <laughs> yeah. like, oh, I'm friends with that guy. They're like, I hate that guy. Yeah, somebody, somebody was was like very confused in Albanian's room. He's just like, are you guys like frenemies? And I'm like, no, Albanian and I are friends. We just spar back and forth. And he's Roman Catholic, and I'm Protestant, and he thinks I'm going to hell, and I think he's going to hell, and we're just trying to help each other out. And and the guy's just like, huh? Okay. <laughs> pretty good you know okay so, so let's be fair for a minute so uh you know if catholicism has the has the championship ring for you know uh, killing and murder in the name of christ um what per, you know protestants aren't completely perfect so what have have has protestantism or what protestant group uh, is like wins a second place trophy next to catholics would that be like uh you know calvin's group <laughs> Or you know what's the what what's the worst atrocities like uh, Protestants whoever, has done? Whoever did the uh, Salem witch hunts, and that that's going to be up there. Whoever did that. Oh, ooh, ooh, okay, that's good. Would that be like Salem that wasn't hunt. the Quakers, Last right? That wasn't that wasn't the Quakers. So, right? I mean, it's Puritans, okay, so are but... we looking for orders of magnitude, or are we just looking for like, like dead stuff? bodies, numbers of like, like numbers dead of bodies? murdered bodies? Like, okay, yes, so I got like, one. Okay, so like so like the Catholic Church is in the millions. Okay. And all Protestants all rolled together, including cults. Like, I'm going to throw, like, Mormons in there, right? Like, anyone not Catholic is in the is in the low thousands. So like, Yeah, yeah, that's what I was looking at. So, like, like, yeah. You know, you got, like, that... whatever, two, three thousand people over the course of 500 years since the Reformation. And then you've got, on the other side of the scale, literally millions and millions and millions. That's fact. And young, what you said, you had something. Young? Yeah, my, my I guess like um, the Protestant side, it would be uh, what you call what you call a white supremacy Christianity. Um, no, like not, not the original <laughs> Christianity, but I mean like because I'm, I'm not saying every every one of us. Is, Ku Klux Klan is what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah like and that. Neo Nazis yeah. and, and 
Yeah, that, similar that to that. Right. I mean, are we in really going to count that as Christianity, though? though? You said cult. That wasn't really religious. It was racial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah, yeah. Said, you said cult. So that's yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that's where he's that's where he's making the connection. Well, even even yeah. so, though, I I think we can include them, and you know, I, I think well, I, I think I mean, even if we did include them, just just because, um, then uh, I think Chris is still right. Like, you know, there's not a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of evidence that they've killed like certainly not millions. So it probably still is in the, the thousands or at least tens of thousands, even if you get things that are like very, very far away from the teachings of Jesus Christ yeah. and just include them anyways, just to get those numbers up. I think we're still talking less than tens of thousands. Yeah. yeah there's right, many things I, I wanted to add to it because cause I got details with it. I like to like add on to it. Cause I know my woman, she's a, uh, she used to be a missionary in Africa and stuff. And there's a lot of things that like, um, now, now like, there's no. Hang on, so, wait. Let's separate. Let's oh, separate. Geez. There's, there's not a whole lot of evidence of KKK in Africa. Just want to say. Yeah, no, no. Saying, so, like, so you can't defend them because I know you're Christian. You, should, you can't, you can't do that. But I just want to say this. Um, the details actually, it's more of like, uh, when I say white supremacy, I mean, I mean like, uh, defending that, that thing more than the kingdom of heaven, and and they'll they'll do it in the name of Jesus as if they, as if it was what Jesus said instead of actually. I'm just basically saying KKK is is a is a is a broad thing. Uh, it, it's a little it's a little later. Um, but white supremacy has been way before uh, KKK. So I, that's why I so said like, that instead of KKK. Why don't you give us an example so that we know what yeah. you're talking about? Like, what is there a doctrine yeah. or a practice that specifically you yeah. feel is white supremacist Christianity? Why don't you lay that on us? Yeah, it's kind of like okay, so if, so most of the churches are not not in that but some of them have the residue what i mean by that is this is that um okay everything in the every person in the bible is 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 white or whatever or or basically saying hey we we created this this unity uh to be the superior in the kingdom of, of god and we're going out out to bring the gospel to these people with our version of christianity instead of all people in mind we are at the top and everybody else that we run into are way, way less less than us. And so therefore we're gonna give them gospel. They're the they're the pagans, they're the off off people, they never know know about God, they're animals or whatever. Okay. Whatever, you so know, like, that's so, so young, are you talking about like, the this is what I'm trying to get at. Is Marquis a white supremacist? Who's Marquis? The black guy in the middle of the screen at the top. The guy next I don't to know you. who that is. I don't know who that is. Like he would Me. believe in tra- he believes in traditional Christianity, Protestant Christianity for you know the last two thousand years. Like, is he a white supremacist? Oh no, that's that that would be baiting uh, this this coon mindset. No, it's not. He he probably not. A lot of people here are not either. But I, I think uh, we have residue of the of the false Christianity. Uh, there's many false Christianities, but I feel like so if you're talking about white supremacy, is he that? No, I would say probably not. Uh, a lot of us are in this room probably are not. Um, I'm saying there is a Christianity that is a, a that has residue on us. Right. Like to what, what, we what think. is one doctrine? Yeah. Just give us like one doctrine yeah. that we can specifically point to that we're like, now that is white supremacy. Like give us like one doctrine. Oh yeah. Well basically if you if you don't if you're not like Republican or, or something like that, you don't take the values of Republican, uh, you know, or whatever. Uh, then you possibly you possibly possibly not Christian. You're probably not doing Christian values uh, or Amer- American definitely values. Definitely a white supremacist. Then. <clears throat> no, I mean like uh, wait, no. wait, wait, hang, hang on, no, wait, no. wait. Let me let me hang on. Let me address some points real quick, um, just to keep us all on the same page because we're getting away. One, you talked about the KKK and then Africa. Just want to point out white that, supremacy. I said that not. Yeah, KKK. yeah, yeah. I I know. Just want to yeah. point out that yeah. KKK. I don't I don't think has really traveled to Africa. But then you said white supremacy. So. KKK oh. is an organization. Hey, gonna I'm, be a straw man. I'm, bro, I'm just buttoning up some stuff. No one should be disagreeing yeah. with what I'm saying. I would expect a yeah. lot of head nods and thumbs up. I'm not saying anything we shouldn't all agree with. So KKK is a, is a racist organization. Separately, there are white supremacists who are not in the organization of KKK who certainly live throughout the globe. That being yeah. said, what you're talking about, like racist Christianity, is kind of like you know the opposite side of the coin to the black Hebrew Israelites who you know it is solely based on skin, yeah. skin color. And you oh, yeah. must be black and lineage back to African slaves, or you're, you know, you're not the right tribe. So I mean, you know, it's yeah. it's, it's exactly the the racist counterpart to that, except uh, yeah. a little bit less. Um, yeah. And then the other thing we were getting into just now is Republican is not a skin color. Okay, now we're all exactly. cut. Continue. 
Exactly. Uh, so that that was loaded. So uh, there's a lot of straw man in it, but I know you didn't intentionally do that, but it was good points if, if I was saying what you thought I was saying. So a lot of this stuff, like KKK, I, I didn't, he inserted that, which they would be included. But I, like I said, I was talking about something that goes further back, than, longer than that. So so therefore, it's not just saying KKK is in Africa. No, I'm not saying that. That would be a straw man or it'd be just not the way I said it. Or, None of us said that. I was just helping us clarify. Yeah, that was, okay, that's good. It wasn't as clear, but but I, I appreciate it. Okay, so, and then adding on to the Black Hebrew Israelites, that's a product of, of white supremacy uh, and stuff like that. But uh, it's like a byproduct that you get after something stupid happens then something else stupid happens too also. Everything has truth in it. All these movements have some truth in it, but their main things sometimes are just corrupted and just, uh, this it comes from a bad heart. But okay, so what else did you say? Um, um, no, we're the, now. So we're still waiting for yeah. a single doctrine that we could, that we could like oh, a Christian yeah. doctrine, not like yeah, a yeah, like, thing. Like, what is yeah, like, would it be like, like yeah, w- w- would it be like, you know, a white supremacist who also says they're a Christian may say something like, uh, you know, because they're they're white, that is closer to light, like the sun, like Jesus, and black people are darker, like the night, which is closer to Satan. Like yeah, that would be. Like I, that, I don't yeah. even think that exists. Yeah. Something <laughs> like that is what he's no, it, for. it does. It does. But yeah, um, it's not something that that we that in this time we would definitely not pay attention to that stuff, as there's books and all type of different things, or just it was a whole lifestyle of thinking that way. It, the fact Can that I you brought that up, for a second? it was not even it was not made up that you that you said that. We know we just came up with a hypothetical analogy when you said that, Nate. I I, I talked to my girl about that. And she's white too. Also, I, I said. That's the type of mindset in which America uh, came from, and we evolved from that. But yeah, so that's so, a reality. That, that's, can I can I interject yeah. real quick? I think I think I think what Young is trying to get at, if I can sort of be a bridge for a little bit, me. I think what Young is trying to get at is maybe some sense of uh, colonialization or imperialist imperialist mindset. Um, so if he's going back to Africa pre you know settling in the in in the north america section or in the americas he's going back to africa and he's talking about maybe the ethnocentricity of europeans coming to africa or going to asia or going to the middle east or going to india spreading the gospel but there being some interlays with christianity you know they're coming in in you know under the auspices of the gospel christianity but there is also a subset agenda of imperialism. Not everybody. Not saying that the only the only people spreading the gospel were also doubling as imperialists and you know trying to colonize these areas. I'm not saying that at all. But I think what he's getting at is that there was some duality there, so that some people did do some things like, you know, uh, 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 destroy villages or doing those different things in the name of spreading the gospel. And with the perception that because we are Euro uh, centric, you know, we represent Eurocentric Christianity and that is the standard, then even though you may come to the gospel like we're teaching you, you are less than, you are maybe subhuman because of your paganism, because of those other different things. And there is a track record for that in history when you go to um, cultural histories or even documented history in. India, in the Middle East, and in Northern Africa. And it's going to happen around the, you know, maybe 14, 15, 1600s. Um, I oh. don't know that those are Protestants. I don't well, know well, that yeah, those I actually, are Protestants well, necessarily. Well, well, yeah, I, I actually have a great example of that. <clears throat> to your point, Marquis, you don't know if they're Protestants. I'm thinking of Catholicism when they came onto native lands. And, you know, they, it was like their thing because they really thought like, you know, these – these uh, they had to to bring Christianity to these quote savages, so that would be a great example of what you're talking about. But unfortunately, that was Catholicism. Um, so and yeah. to see that's what I was going to say. Now, see, my history, I'm not I'm not clear enough as far as, and I wasn't clear enough as far as whether because what Reformation happens. Help me, Chris. I'm rusty and I'm tired. Reformation happens. Fifteen, 15 seventeen. Fifteen. Okay, fifteen seventeen. I was going to say fifteen hundred. Fifteen seventeen. Thank you so much, Chris. I appreciate you. Um, Chris keeps me honest with my church history, <laughs> late church history, early church history. We're okay. Late church history. The more recent we get, the fuzzier my brain gets, but 1517, right? That's all right. We got, 
That happens. So that what? happens to most of my charismatic friends. They have to get fuzzy in the 20th century. I'm just harassing you, Pastor Sean. Oh, it's so early. Funny. It's early, Bubba. I know. I know. I know. Good morning, <laughs> Chris. I'm on, Chris. I will deal with you later. Right. Chris is <laughs> but anyway, shot, but I feel like uh, I'm what? getting called I... to the principal's office later. Yeah, Chris. But uh, I'm tattletelling on you, Sean. Get him. But um, no. So so like 15, 17, as you said, Nate. Um, that if that's Protestantism being birthed into the world, let's say. You're gonna you're gonna be hard pressed to say, oh, even though they are still fighting with Catholics because Catholicism is vehemently opposed to all of that stuff, they are somehow finding the resources, the means, and the time and opportunity to go and colonize and imperialize these other countries more than the Catholics would. I don't I think that that just doesn't follow. Um, if anything, they are hopping on the ships to come to North America to flee religious persecution. And that's why we get the Puritan society in colonial America. So they're, they're fleeing persecution. They're not necessarily doing the persecuting until maybe the next hundred or so years later, when you get to things like the Salem witch trials, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't know that we could go further back than that to, yeah, I don't, and, and not, and, and not be Catholicism. You know, I yeah, I don't think we could go further back than that. But yeah, just just trying to provide some clarity as to maybe what I thought Young was talking about. But anyway, Sean, you sound like you want to say something, and Nate, you're giving me the, the you're talking too long throat clear. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna shut that, up now. That means everybody no, do that be, anyways. In my, <laughs> be in my uh, church history class tonight. What I deal with from AD 30 to 100 AD, <laughs> but. uh but when it comes down to uh, the Eurocentric, yes, it was Catholicism, but Protestantism has some guilt too. All right, most uh, most of the uh, when we deal with the slavery movement in America, Canada, and in uh, Central America and, and South America, we deal with Catholicism and Protestants. They are guilty as well. So uh, when you deal with that and uh, talk about how black folk was called as three-fifths of men and according to the Constitution, uh, so of course that was changed. But uh, all of that is historical. You Like you said, you got cultural and written. So Protestants have as much guilt as Catholics and Anglicans and Eastern Orthodox. Matter of fact, the Catholic Church tried to come into Ethiopia and tell the Ethiopians that they weren't practicing true Christianity and tried the same thing in Egypt with the Coptic church. Now, so, I would want to clarify real so quick. That's, when, you that's, that's have as much, when, when, when you say Protestants have as much, when you say has as much guilt, is, is that body count or is that like in the spirit of things? Because as far as body count goes, about, like I think it, I think Chris was accurate. Like no one's got the body count like Catholicism. It's uh, it's uh, it's uh, spiritually as, as well All as right. uh, as as well. Not as well as far as body count, because when you had uh, the triangle trade, uh, which went from Africa to uh, England to the uh, islands, uh, you had that. And so it was the Catholic Church as well as the Orthodox, Anglican, and Protestant churches that were involved in it. So that's why I say all of them have a part to play. And, and, and something to repent of. So. Yes, and as well as, you know, I mean, uh, like, uh, who was it? Um, someone said um, in chat, Jose says, you know, I don't think you can single out Catholicism as the only Christian group associated with colonialism. And I would say, sure, um, just like you also can't neglect, um, you know, undoubtedly, probably, you know, like the first uh, the first slave traders were was like the Black King, and I forget the country. Uh, and undoubtedly, some of the people in Africa heard the message of Christianity. So we can't neglect the the black Christians who also participated in slave trade. And that was also bad. And they also share the same spiritual liability. So, you know, that's bad. But enough of apologizing or, you know, demonizing people hundreds of years ago. Let's see if Joanna has something new. Joanna, what's up? Are you speaking, Joanna? <clears throat> Three, two, one. Zach, what's up, Zach? 
Oh, wait, there's another yeah, gotta, puzzle first. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, ahead. that is Sean. Okay, go ahead, Zach. No, that is Sean. He just changed his PTR. Yeah, yeah I, um, I have a question about um, being a sinner. Uh, and I was discussing with some friends last night, and it was stated that uh, the person stated that they are not a sinner, but a saint. Um, and there was a Latin phrase that was brought up. Um, soul justice. Um, trying to remember it off the top of my head. I can't remember, but it means to be simultaneously a sinner yet justified. Um, so I was wondering like how like we properly identify acknowledging uh, the new creation, but also um, the idea that we are sinners as well. Oh, tag me. Hang on. Let's see. I want to try to get the phrase first. The Latin phrase you're looking for is precator sed istus. Yes. Does that sound right? Precator uh, at to... justice. Yeah. So which translates to sinner but just. So you're, you're going to find lots of whose microphone is popping and crackling. Go oh, to you, Joanna. Did you have something to say, Joanna? We'll, we'll check back in with you in just a second. But I got to mute you because that's, or mute yourself because that was a lot of popping. But yeah, so you're going to get lots of fruit inspectors and people that are saying, you're not doing this just the right way. So you don't have the correct gospel or you're a liar. or I don't know. You're going to have lots of fighting over semantics. But basically, you know, before we're in Christ, we are all sinners. When Christ saves us, when we're born again, when we're redeemed, now we still have our earthly, fleshly body with desires and we will sin undoubtedly. But that doesn't mean we are a sinner because we have Christ's righteousness imputed to us. So we may as well say we are a saint in the eyes of God because now we're born again, redeemed by Christ. When he sees us, he sees Jesus' righteousness over us, as us. Um, so, so that's the correct way to look at it. So then come up with any catchy phrase somebody wants to. Like, I mean, I think that Latin one was, was fine. I wouldn't argue with that. Someone would because it'd say, no, no, you're not a sinner anymore. You just still sin. And I would just throw my hands up and be like, whatever, you're cool with God. That's all that matters. Chris, <clears throat> father of Latin, do you have anything to say about that? Agree, disagree? Anyway, Zach, that's my answer. Can I can I contribute? <clears throat> uh, yeah. Right. So, Zach, what I'd say is um, I'm, I'm with me. I wouldn't make a – it's not a hill I die on. I don't, I don't care that much. But if I was going to get into – the grammar Nazism of it, you know, from it, from an English perspective, right? Cause then that's, you know, Chris is going to do the Latin and then I'm, I'm, I'm going to be the English person. Um, and so what I'd say is no, I wouldn't say that people who have been redeemed by Christ and believe are believers are sinners, even if they sin, right? Because the word sinner, when you put the ER on something, you make it either vocational or habitual. That's the point of when you add an ER to nouns and you're referring to a person, right? If I'm a worker, I'm a person who works and working is now my vocation or it's a habitual action. Those are the two ways that the ER works when you're adding them to nouns and referring to a person. So you would be referring to someone who habitually sins. And then the Bible says those people, you know, if you habitually sin, you commit willful sin, then the spirit of God's not in you. That person's not that person is not considered a believer, right? So that's going to be a defining factor, a hard line, not a, not a thin line like the one between love and hate, a fine, not fine, a hard, thick line in between believers and non-believers, right? The one that goes out of their, not goes out of their way to sin, but the one, well, yeah, also goes out of their way to sin or habitually sins as opposed to the people who maybe fall short and make mistakes, but they are submitted to Christ and that transformative process in uh, of being conformed to the image of Christ by the spirit. So I wouldn't say they are sinners, which is why I'm, I've never been the one to say, you know, the modern version of that is, hey, we're all sinners saved by grace. No, the appropriate thing to say is we were sinners who are saved by grace. But to say that we are currently habitual sinners is to directly contradict what scripture says that we should not do which is habitually sin. Um, and so then, and then the Bible also calls us saints. Don't think it's a problem to call us 
call ourselves what the Bible calls us. The Bible refers to the believers as saints. So, and it doesn't make any distinction of perfection. I think that's where we maybe draw on the Catholic historical understanding of sainthood as, you know, totally flawless and perfect, second only to Jesus. No, in the Bible, saints are simply those who believe and persist and persevere in that belief. So if we're going to go by the biblical definition, saints is totally fine. And that doesn't preclude us from making mistakes. Man, Marquis, between this and uh, and the other day, man, I've learned more from you about grammar than my uh, high school English teacher ever taught me. It's good stuff. Oh, that's good. Uh, Zach, what so do you uh, what do you think about that? To follow up, um, Chris gives us his wisdom. Okay, yeah, yeah, Chris. I would like for Chris to go, then I'll give my conclusion. So, Father Chris. I, I think that Marquis and I largely agree. However, I think that <clears throat> some of what he's saying could be perceived in a different manner. So, what I will say is, you know, we are simultaneously a sinner and yet justified. And that is what Luther was talking about in that Latin quote. Because what Nate originally said was positional righteousness. Because the idea of positional righteousness was like a radical uh, departure from Rome. Joanna, you yeah, hit Joanna your mute button, and, I, I, and I, I don't have the ability to, uh, to mute you because it's not showing up for me. All right, thanks. Weird. Uh, yeah, um, anyway, so, so yeah, so what I'm going to say, though, is that the whole this whole idea of Christians don't habitually sin, I'm going to disagree with. We all habitually sin because we don't have any kind of a clue just how holy God is. Every Christian habitually sins every single day because compared to the holiness of God, we are sinners. And this idea, there's this. Hey, Chris, this idea. I recant and I agree with you. I recant. Oh. I'm going to recant that. Okay. And I like what you said. I like what you said. That makes sense. I agree. Wow. Well, that was. Look at us okay. getting along never, so far. <laughs> that's never happened on Clubhouse before. Somebody's like, whoa, okay. That's awesome. Thanks, Marquise. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, when we study the holiness of God, we suddenly begin to understand just how horrendous we are in terms of being sinners and and like i like to liken it like this if you see a light pole like off in the distance like you're standing on a football field and on across the way is a light pole and you start walking towards the light pole and it's pitch black that's the only thing you can see so if you look down at your hands or you look down at your feet or you look down at your your arms you're not going to see a whole lot of yourself as you get closer and closer to the source of that light, you're going to see more and more of, oh, wow, I'm covered in mud. I didn't realize that. Like, oh, man, there's mosquitoes all around me. Oh, look, there's flies, you know, on me. You know, like, because you're just not going to be able to perceive those things until you get closer to a light source to see just how horrendous you are. And so, until you get close enough to that light source where you look down, and you're like, wow, I'm literally covered in mud. Uh, yeah, want to respond, Zach? Yeah, um, I like I like what was brought to the table. Um, fun, fun, like, thing about the conversation is it was um, Reformed versus Catholics. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the uh, discussion went... <laughs> The discussion went on for about two hours, um, and I came to a conclusion similar to what you guys were presenting. I was just kind of getting like a little sharpening early this morning, um, but I, I maintain the idea that um, in the eyes of God, we are um, sinner, I mean, in, uh, saints because he's justified us and sees the righteousness of Christ. When he looks at us, he sees not our sins. Um, but in the eyes of man, which would speak to like our condition as still being in the flesh, we are still quote unquote sinners. And, and to a degree in the eyes of God, and I say to a degree, cause like, it's a very nuanced thing. Um, we are still sinners in the sense that we sin 
um, as Chris would put it, like habitually. Yeah, uh, uh, Joanna, did you um, did you have anything to say now, or I don't know why you moved yourself to the audience, but if you wanted to say anything, feel free to jump back up. Uh, Young, how about you? You have anything else to say? Any other questions or anything? Um, uh, I'll probably come back to you guys about it, but uh, I would say, uh, just to uh, close, like a little bit, what we were talking about or whatever. I um I, I brought up the point about the stuff that I did because I did a research about uh a lot of things about the carnivals and stuff, all the stuff that I didn't know happened at, at our churches uh that I that I was attending for a long time. And so anyways, those um it's a lot of stuff that uh has not been recovered. So I I think okay, so here's a question, I guess, to everybody. Um do you think reparations is biblical, I guess? Uh, perhaps on a what? perhaps on like a per, perhaps on like a personal level, if I steal from you and um, I I repent, recognize the error of my way, and I go give back what I was stolen, and maybe like an, a little extra because I feel convicted about what a bad thing I did to you, then I see that like making it right with your brother before taking your offering. You know, like kind of I, I see it sort of related to that. As far as like a secular government organization uh, or a secular government forcing people. To do this, um, absolutely not. Yeah, it, it's because it's like loaded because like a lot the situation uh, that these uh, basically African Americans like that that they're in is not so much of a hey so and so did this in our time. It's more of like hey these people are done this in a biblical like not biblical like in, in a good way like saying that the Bible condones this stuff. They're doing it in some kind of way that God would. God would actually hold them, hold the our ancestors. Uh, I'm talking about like, cause I have white ancestors too, also, and so like that. I'm talking about the negative ancestors. He would hold them accountable for what they what they did, no matter what time it was, because God is a a God of all times, and He always says He 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 deals with things in that generation. Uh, like He'll say, "Hey, the seed of this and that, so and so, and this this will bless so and so, or or they will, or somebody will say so and so is cursed because because he did this and now his people is going to this only in America. Normally we'll just like, we'll, we'll kill the, we'll, it's, it's like we, we make it extra, extra personal so that people will get away with, with a certain things. And I, that's what, I, that's what I'll say. And, um, Oh, we, we normally pay for things by the government as a totality. Like we, we all together pay it. Even if we, we don't have any choice. Um, a lot of us do. I, I think one of the things that's happening here, like uh, I believe in the unity of church, and I, I've been teaching that. I've, I've been teaching how to train missionaries and believers and um, and my white and black brothers to get together, and all the people get together to how how to deal with this this illness within uh, of America and Christian in the Christian church. And and one of the one of the conversations going to have to start with how to actually think about reparations. Because people, I'm not talking about like, hey, oh, well, you're going to have to pay me. It's not like that. It's more like we know this is a problem. And if if a person acknowledges something is a sin or something happened so long against these people, it would actually be a missionary trip or missionary goal to actually repair a a, a culture uh, that uh, evil people have, have messed up. Not to say that everybody was evil. You know what I'm saying? It's to say that there's a portion, a big portion of America that cause these people who are struggling and I, as our brothers and sisters in America causing them to uh, stumble uh, and causing them to like, you know, you know, make um, like America, like kind of, kind of worse, you know? Yeah. I well, know. Can I, can I, can I jump in real quick? So I'd say one thing, first of all, like, as far as, you know, like me, Chris, <clears throat> me, Chris, Steph, Sean, uh, you know, Apostle Marquise, you know, uh, very, very, and you know, let's not forget other people of other races too. Um, I don't think we've ever had that conversation. There's never been any begrudgment. Like, you know, we've talked about pretty deep issues and like reparations and, you know, white devils and, you know, black panthers like that. That's really never come up. Like when it's, when it's us Christians of mixed races in here, like for the last, what, year or something, I've known you guys, like we always talk about like deeper spiritual doctrines and the more, most contentious it gets is between Arminianism and Calvinism. So race has played zero part. So like, if, if um, you know, someone accuses me 
or you know Marquise or someone of, of secretly harboring like ill will because of um, you know race or slavery or reparations or something like that, then we're all doing a really good job of hiding it because this just never came up. So I would say um, if if you really have Christ, that's not saying you may not have issues if you've really been personally impacted or uh, something like that. Which I mean, by the time we're talking about reparations, it's hard to be personally impacted. But you know, you know, maybe someone in your ancestor, like it's a big deal in your family history, and it's talked about over every every celebration or Thanksgiving or something like that, where you always are, are aware of it. You may have like some bitterness you need to work through. But I would say this is the epitome of man's wisdom trying to solve something that only God can spiritually heal. Because if you try to, especially, uh, I, mean, I mean, you talk about missionaries. So even if the church tried to take it upon themselves to do that, you're going to create more problems and solutions. Because first of all, how like do you just go on skin color? You can't do that because you wouldn't want to give reparations to a black family if that black family's ancestors were slavers. You wouldn't want to do that. And you wouldn't want to take money from white people if their ancestors were liberators. Um, and there's no way to figure that out. Yeah. So you're just going to yeah. create animus. It is a way. By the, by the, I, yes, so, so they're going to try yeah. to create animus. So the yeah. we need to stop man's wisdom and turn to God's spiritual wisdom and yeah. let Christ heal people's hearts. That, that okay. is what I believe is the answer. Yeah, that's some deep stuff, bro. Um, our, this is If you're like familiar with this argument, you would know that's the first step that you would have to address that's already been addressed, but I do. It's good to announce it to the audience because some people don't know how to think toward, towards this topic, which is good. This is the intro. The intro uh, to, to let you know. So it's a problem with some of that is because like uh, a lot of this. First of all, a lot of people. Okay, so if you're talking about the reparations, you're talking about something that's just another another mission trip. That's all this is. It's just another mission trip to repair. And rest, restoration and reparations is, is is the same thing. And to actually deal with this uh, black and white situation, we know that we all come from one one person from Adam, uh, you know, so Adam and Eve. Uh, so we come from those two people. Uh, this is the origin. And we know this, but a lot of a lot of times um, when you're dealing with the black and white situation, it's actually holding the the the, the spiritual entity called America or whatever, uh, holding it accountable to 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 its creation. If they create this um, this uh, this dichotomy and this monster, uh, then then it'd be held ac accountable uh, uh, to God and and uh, to to human and man mankind uh, according to what it created. Um, so therefore, whenever you're dealing with black and white, oh, I have a, a white ancestor and I have a black ancestor, native, whatever it is, <clears throat> we're not dealing with uh, your whole seed because otherwise nobody would have re reparations at all because we all come from each other. Uh, but I will say this um it's it's to deal with the social social name the so, social con construct and the disenfra disen uh disenfranchise uh disenfranchisement of these people or prejudices and all this type of thing that's what the this is what they're doing they, they're studying the bill they're studying the bill uh they actually pay for, to actually study the bill to know what what will be paid and what would not what would not be a lot of people are in, in our churches and stuff like that, uh, they don't know about it. Cause I, cause like, we're very good. This is what I want to address with like y'all relationship, which is very awesome. I love that. Oh, a lot of African-Americans are, and, and, and white people, they are good, but a lot, I know a lot of African-Americans are good at actually, uh, smiling and actually doing, you know, you know, not offending. We're good. We're good at not offending in the, in the, in the black, um, uh, Christian side. Uh, it's not really that that those things should exist, the black and white church. It shouldn't exist. We're working towards a oneness. But we are very good at not uh, alarming the 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 uh the 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 white the white person uh in in um in offending them. We're very good at that because we don't want to uh, trigger we don't want to trigger either fragility or we don't want to trigger or uh, make somebody feel bad when they don't fully understand the depth of of, of how uh, they they would impact so therefore they they suck it up no matter where they go and we smile we smile it's just, it's just like this is what uh well, well, hang on said. let's let's get oh, wait, hang on let's get some other people because you've, you've been talking a lot but i'll say you know for the record like you know I'm, I'm a pretty good case i've got black ancestors not not in the sense that we all trace back to the same source i mean like legit i've got black ancestry in my family not in like four or five generations away um anyways but you know, so I'm one of those people you're talking about. But uh, Marquise, uh, Sean, Chris, anyone else? Zach, any anyone else? Want to yeah, weigh in? yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, 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 for the record, I forgot. Sorry. Moment. Yeah, it, my record. Uh, no, I'm unconvinced. It's a bad idea. Don't do that. Uh, Marquise, go ahead. Right. So I think 
I think the thing we have to be careful of is we have to make sure that we keep categories with categories. If not, we end up making logical leaps. So on the one hand, we have, we, we started talking about spiritual guilt and, and that kind of thing, right? This is something where God would hold these people responsible and those different things. And that, if you're not careful, you're going to get into culpability because of things ancestors did, which follows the track of generational curses. The problem with that is when we come unto Christ, any curses that would have been hovering over us, having any kind of penalty of us because of sins of ourselves and the people in our bloodline, whatever those different ideas are, those are under the blood and at the cross. So that we have to be very careful that we're not still holding people accountable to sins Christ forgave from centuries ago or from decades ago or from years ago. So there's that part from the, from the spiritual category. And then, as you said, reparations is about um, it's going to be about social or political uh, 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 gap or detriment or um, inconsistencies, discrepancies, whatever you want to call them. Um, and so then there's a spiritual aspect and then there's a social aspect. It is not the church's role to correct social imbalances. That would be the government's role, right? The only what? place in, hold on a second, the only really? place in time where the church is responsible for correcting social imbalances is when the church caused those social imbalances. Take Acts chapter five or so when they appoint the deacons. I mean, it might be chapter four where they appoint the deacons. Um, the whole reason they appoint the deacons, the whole reason we have a diaconate is because there was grumblings among the Grecians. That's how the chapter starts off because the church was distributing goods at a disproportionate rate where the widows from Greek converts were being neglected in the daily ministrations of, you know, all the things being held in common, right? So the Jews was getting it first, and then the Gentiles was getting it second, and sometimes not at all. So the apostles, because the church was responsible for that social imbalance or that socially based imbalance, the apostles say, hey, we shouldn't be given to waiting tables. Appoint, you know, from amongst yourselves, seven men who are full of the spirit and all of these different things. And that's where we get the deacons from. And from then on, the problem is solved. No more issues with an imbalance of distribution of goods from all that was held in common. So I use that as a biblical precedent of a social issue that the church causes, the church fixes, right? When we come to slavery in America or racism in America, sure, the church may have had influence there, right? But really, it's going to be political. It's written into the law, absent of the church. Matter of fact, there is a very strong narrative of separation in church and state of, of church and state at the very same time that they are writing into law these different things. Now, the Bible was misused to perpetuate that. We know all those things about the slave Bible, but that is not the church causing the social problem. But, right? but, but it was the atheism, like atheism didn't do it. Like you couldn't do no, no, it. But, but no, but no, young, it's you, you know. but if you're trying to track it to an ideology, it's simply yeah. the government. It's simply the government. We're, we're not talking about ideology. This is why I said we have to keep categories with categories. We're not talking about ideologies. When we're talking about a social issue, we're talking about the government doing something that affects people right. and the way they relate to each other. Yeah, this is so deep. we're talking about the you're right. Right. So. So when we, well, if we parse it out that way, yeah. right? Now, mm -hmm. let me say this. I'm good with reparations. I'm good with it, right? But I think it would need to be done in not any, without any, I would suggest that it would, or it should be done without any spiritual or in that sense, moral um, uh, uh, implications. I think if it was gonna be done in any manner, it should be done maybe from ethical perspective, maybe from a, a, a political perspective, a financial perspective, maybe even yeah. a legal perspective yeah. with respect to justice. But we can't blend and merge the conversations of guilt about ancestors because those were words that were used in our explanations a few moments ago in the conversation. Mm. Guilt, right, which refers to culpability and sin. And then there's a separate conversation of responsibility yeah. for correcting the social imbalance. We have to keep those separate because any yeah. guilt is extinguished by the cross. Any curse, any uh, culpability, 
from a spiritual perspective, as far as morality, if the if the person is saved, okay. all their guilt is gone. Okay, can I say something, Apostle? Yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate that from everything that everybody said. Um, um, so here's the thing. I, this is what I believe. I, I believe uh, the state that a lot of African Americans are in, they're in a state where they're perceived as the baby, the one who's who's the one who, the one who's get who get, gets corrected, even though their mindset is just as biblical as anybody opposing them. Uh, so like, so when I'm talking about reparations and stuff like that, it could be. So if we were in the Book of Judges, like when you look at these the people who had good judgment in the Bible, reparations, someone who actually follows through with that it would have to be someone who's very spiritual, someone very deep that can actually judge because if we don't do it, if we don't lose it on earth, it won't be loosed here. So here's the thing. You're going to have deep, you got to have to have deep people to actually understand this, this type of stuff for the people who don't, who are not for that type of stuff. They're not going to agree with it. That's that, that just means that, Hey, the least you done to these, the least you did to me, did for me. So I, this is what, I, cause I believe that everybody should have some form of reparation because this is a statement to the world. This world will be taken over. This world that that, that denies reparation, they will be raided by by the kingdom of heaven, the God of God of Israel, uh, and, and the heavens. He's gonna he's gonna come back and he's gonna actually hold them accountable for for how they did the least of these. And so therefore, like I, I don't I shouldn't bat, bat an eye at uh at anybody who who, who disagrees with repairing uh, a group of people who who were who were treated so bad. I shouldn't bat an eye at it because this is the kingdom in which probably the Lord is going to take over all these kingdoms. He's going to hold them accountable. And this is their stubbornness. All kingdoms has a stubbornness where they say, I'm not going to bat an eye. You guys are not, you guys don't, don't deserve nothing. Remember the Egyptians did this oh. and they, they did this to Moses. And he said, you guys, you guys don't need this and that, whatever. And then, you know, they made fun of them. You know, they're saying, you guys are lazy. Why would you guys want to? And then they put them to harder work. So, I'm not saying that everybody who disagrees is in that, but I'm saying they, they're close to that spirit. And like, and I'm saying it's very biblical to actually repair and actually keep repairing other people, not just only African-Americans. And I'm including that with a package. It just because, because nobody here can really change, change nothing. They're going to do reparations either way. God's going to make it happen anyway. But I'm saying I'm including this in the package that, Hey, we care about all people. We don't, we don't have time to be playing with this. Um, hey, uh, we so get repaired. Okay, yeah, we'll so, so young what are we talking about the government is going to distribute checks to people reparations or are we talking about you know again what nate was saying like i stole 10 bucks from marquee i'm going to repay him 20 bucks oh no it's it's um it's it's deeper than uh personal it's not a slavery was not just a personal so the thing. first thing so, yeah. so the first thing so this is we're talking about yeah the federal government taking funds from people redistributing them to other people well it's based off of the, the selling of, of certain things and taxes and stuff like that different right things. so but yeah um, well taxes well, I actually taxes, got an answer towards taxes it, are theft i got an answer so towards so it. let me ask you so we're going to steal from one group of people oh, so i know i know, I know. to I take know. that stolen money and give it to another group of people and this mm. is somehow justice Okay. Wait, 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 hang on. I want to get Wait, wait, hang on, hang on, young. I was going to load the questions, man. Yeah. Well, hang on. I want to. Speaking of loading, you you said some equivocations that I'm pretty certain I want to, you know, politely call false, um, because you're talking about repairing relationships and then move that a, a few a few degrees away. But you did say someone that would be uh, like deeply spiritual, discerning, or yeah. a good judge, mm -hmm. um, which would automatically exclude. Um, hang on, would automatically exclude our government. And, uh, you know, like like pretty much everyone, except, um, you know, Boss. if you put your trust in me, I accept this high authority and I support reparations if I'm the one to dole it out. Um, short of that, then then no, sorry. Um, but I, I also think that, well, that's that's enough for now. So, I mean, by, by your own words, like, mm -hmm. I, I agree with Chris all day long. And, you know, you said you kept using that verse that's to the least of right. these. No, to the least of these is of your own. It's not it, like that. That would that would be false anyway. You wouldn't be fulfilling to the least of these if, like Chris so accurately put it, if the government forces you and steals your money to give to other people, that's not doing to the least of these. That's not out of the goodness of your yeah, heart. Yeah, I think that's false. Wait, I, 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 I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. If you think it's false, then you correct it. But you said it, so I'm. I didn't get to. He, um, he, he was fine. Uh, okay, well, sorry. okay, okay. Apologize. But yeah, so to the least of these is if you of your own volition 
see a need and you meet it, congratulations. That's to the least of these, uh, you know, if it's to the least of these. So, Nate, uh, let me yeah, respond to Chris so, so it wouldn't be a, a hole in, in anything I said. So, like, this is one thing that we never never do as debaters or anybody that have a good dialogue. We never stack our, our questions. But I know you had to get in there because I, I commend you, actually, by the way, by, by remembering everything you had to say. <laughs> and I didn't even say that that was everything, but because it was so much that was going on, this is the error. This is the problem that we run into with communication when it's a stacked uh, questioning a session. So, like, when, yeah, I could have no, cleared that up just, without actually addressing them. Yeah, we'll address it, but let's try to keep our responses short because I also want to get yeah, yeah, Sean and Dean right. in here too. You're right, brother. Yeah. So, so like, so the responses are need to be short. The questions need to be short. This is good, but it's okay. So here we go. So, um, okay. So what did you? Okay, I, I, I lost what Chris was saying. Chris, can you like us? Uh, uh, the government steals stuff. That's bad. Okay, thank you, brother. Yeah. So the government stealing stuff. Uh, give unto Caesar what is to Caesar, and God is what is to God. Uh, so here's the thing. Uh, it's taxes has been God even told us to to give taxes to 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 Caesar no, and no also to to that. God. So, so no well, no, no. It, it's it's disputed whenever I mention taxes. So like here's the thing. This is what I'm saying on, on the response to that. Um, I believe this is what I believe. You got to have spiritual cojones. You got to have uh, in order for people to take this on to take this type of thing on. It's this is not the only thing. This is this is this is a process that is very very biblical. Uh, to do to do reparation restoration uh, um restoration is reparation basically and so like what's happening is this um jesus he comes to the, to this god the rich man and it's not to say that everybody's rich that's white but we know the income health wealth gap is separate i'm only dealing with um i'm not only just dealing with spiritual stuff that's that that's a little bit more easier than just than uh the physical stuff but the physical stuff it's hard to actually fix that stuff because we don't think we have power to do that and that, that's that's another problem in itself. How are we going to rule the nations uh, when Jesus comes back if we don't know how to deal with stuff socially and heal stuff? Jesus is going to have to do that because we are not that good at it. But here's the thing. So Je Jesus offers to this rich guy. He says to him, and Jesus tested him. And this, matter of fact, is a test to our, to our churches to see which kingdom are they really under? Which kingdom are we under? And I, I, I brought this to my, my young adults, people, when I, we was talking about the unity of all churches and stuff like that. Which kingdom are you really under? Are you under the kingdom of this uh, this United States that's going to be going to be burnt when Jesus comes back, or are you under under Jesus' kingdom who who does not have a black and white church? Uh, which one? Now prove it by your actions, because because if you're talking about the rich man, the rich man he said, hey, hey, um, go sell this and that and go and then and then you know then follow me. He did. This. Jesus knew what he was going to do. Because he knew how much he lo they loved riches and stuff like that and their wealth and they didn't they didn't have the, you know, you know. So so and, and so, 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 so young. I yeah. get what your point is. So so yeah. the rich man sells his stuff. That's the right thing to do. Yeah, no, that's not, not the all the time. That that that's a test. Yeah, yeah, it's not a test either. It so is that a test. I'm test. saying it is. So I I know, and I'm saying it's not. That is not what the scripture is teaching. The scripture is not teaching that it is a test that you give away all your wealth and then that is who the true Christians oh, are. Yeah. That's nonsense. Yeah, I didn't That's even not say that. So you means. just concluded that. You, I, I, I said this on this topic, what we're talking about, and I just try to try to make uh -huh. sure that you was not got, you was not misguided in what I was saying. That that point that I was mentioning was only focused on on the process of like, okay, first of all, everything is a test. Everything is a test of currency. No. Every, no okay, so no, you you're playing with you playing with me, and I'm yeah, actually trying yeah, to make hang, some hang sense. Hang on, wait, 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 stop, Young. You're you're. It's hard He's trying to, to misunderstand me in a wait, 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 wait. It, which is not because it's very easy to misunderstand you because you're getting no, really you're just doubling up on the same thing you're saying. Okay, young, I'm trying to say, man, I don't have a mute button, it's not working. Clubhouse hates me, so my only option is for people to be respectful and professional, or I have to drop them to the audience because mute apparently is not an option. So sorry, but I was trying to say, I don't know if we give you another chance, I'm fine if you stick around a while, but you got to let us speak. But we were trying to let you speak, and you acknowledged short responses. But the problem was you were getting so passionate that you were like, oh, uh, 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 uh. man, you're just hard to follow. You're hard to follow. And I know I can get like that too. And when I am, Chris and Steph are here to call me on it and like a thousand atheists in chat. So I'm preaching to the choir. I have the same issue. But that, that's, that's the problem. It was hard to follow you because you were, you were bouncing around so quick. But one of the first things, before Chris talks about the young ruler, one of the first things you said, here's my memory, thank, thank you, Jesus, was you talked about um, how you know G Jesus says, give to Caesar what Caesar's. Well, that's true, even an unjust Caesar. However, our Caesar, 
also has in the rules and the law and the Constitution, you know, that taxation without representation is theft. So our Caesar tells us this. So we're playing by the laws our Caesar gives us. So whenever you get to reparations and forcibly taking taxes, our representation is diminishing more and more and more, and that becomes theft. So our Caesar doesn't say give blindly to us. Our Caesar gives us guidelines to follow and to live by. So when our Caesar violates these, we have grievances we can air against our Caesar, and it's completely consistent with Christ. Give to Caesar what's, our, what's Caesar's. So if North Korea says, give us all your money, well, <clears throat> they're going to take it anyway, so you don't have a choice. You're giving them all their money. If America, which is probably going to be like North Korea at some point, um, currently says, no, taxation without representation is theft, and here's uh, grievances you can air, and here's legal processes that we allow you as citizens to do, then we're playing by Jesus's rules when he says, give to Caesar what Caesar. Our Caesar allows for grievances. Um, Chris, uh, you want to talk about the, oh, oh one more thing. <clears throat> and you're trying to use like Old Testament spiritual things in Judaism governed by high priests and say that's in any way equivocal to a secular, godless, atheistic government. Um, that's just total apples and apples and rotten oranges. Those two are not compared. The, the next furthest reach would be like, I come and jack you with a baseball bat, you know, make you take, uh, make you take me to your ATM, give you, give me all your money and then go redistribute that. Like I'm some kind of Robin hood. You'd say, no, that's not, that's not reparations that you just robbed me. That's the same thing we're talking about here, except with a secular godless government doing it. It's the same thing. It's theft. It's robbery. If you feel convicted in your heart to go make amends and make something right with someone, then that's between you and God and that person. Uh, follow your conscience. Go do that. Follow your convictions led by the Holy Spirit. When we talk about an entity or an organization compelling you, that is antichrist. Uh, Chris, go ahead with what you were saying about the rich young ruler, if you like. Welcome, Steph. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, Reparations. Okay. Oh, crap. Uh, Steph, get back up here. I'm sorry. Clubhouse switched it. They, they switched the, the move to audience and make moderator. That's not like you when you're trying to be snarky. That's like me. <clears throat> yeah, that's not you like you when you're trying to be snarky and, and fool your power, uh, female usurper, um, and do it on purpose. I, I legit tried to make you moderator. But they Ooh, moved. Oh, Nate, you go get a whoop. Mm -hmm. I am. <laughs> uh -huh. All right, Chris, yeah. finish your thing and then we'll see what D has to say about this. All, all I was gonna say is like, look, I mean like this entire thing is predicated on a view of both scripture and Christianity that comes from uh, a place uh, that is a, a human based religion. And it's, it's just, it's Marxism. Um, you know, we, we see it as cultural Marxism. Uh, Vody Bauckham wrote an excellent book called fault lines talking about this. This is infecting the church. Um, you know, these types of things are Gramsian uh, constructs um, of, of a Hegelian history. Um, the, it's just, this is the type of thing that will divide the church rather than unifying the church. Um, and it has done that so far. And so this idea that if you reject, um, you know, the government coming along and instituting some type of Marxist program um, to redistribute wealth because of social justice. Uh, again, this has its roots in, in um, you know, Dr. Bell and in, you know, he mentioned fragility. This is Robin DiAngelo. Um, this is all this social justice nonsense. Um, none of it is biblical. Um, I would again, um, encourage a couple of books. The first would be Vody Bauckham's um, Fault Lines, coming at it from a Christian perspective. Um, another one is uh, Destroying Woke Craft instead of Witchcraft by Dr. James Lindsay. Um, there's, there's a lot of really good stuff. You can check out some stuff by Christopher Rufo about this. Um, but it is meant to divide the church. It is a satanic attack on the church. Uh, D, what's up? Do you have any feelings oh, about I this? Oh, I wanted to, real quick in the chat, Young Zealous said, I wasn't here for what he said, but he said, Nate, why do you hate repairing the hurt? Uh, money won't fix this. 
right? You're hurting like, me right now with the same things over and over again. Like repair the hurt. Give me all your money and I will consider the hurt you've caused me right. repaired. If you don't do that, then why don't you want to repair the hurt you're causing me right now? Uh, Steph. Oh yeah, I was gonna say for the record, I actually am for reparations in the form of incentives. So waivers on property tax or income tax, uh, that kind of thing. That would actually create gener generational wealth. Uh, but checks is just a dumb idea all around. Uh, Dee, do you wanna speak? Are you able to speak? Yeah, um, so I'm kind of, I am for reparations. I agree more so in property um, to build wealth long term, not necessarily cutting a check um, because I just don't think that's even a good idea, but more so like, you know, something that has to do with property, not even education, just more so property. But my, I guess my issue is when we say theft, it's just, to me, that seems like it's a, we have to say theft for everything. Like Ukraine, theft, welfare, theft. Like it's so many things that the government pays for that does not agree with most of American society that when we as I don't and I don't know, I don't as far as his argument about it being a biblical issue, I don't know about that. I'm I couldn't really follow it, but it's so many things that are a issue that we don't agree with that the government pays for that I feel like it's a divide when we say reparations is theft. Um, especially when the theft occurred to the people who lives were stole from them, the possibility of them getting ahead in America was stole from them. So, so did my immigrant family a hundred years ago steal from people and then they now I have to pay? But Chris it's not it has nothing to do with I'm I will be paying for it too. So it's not just how okay, let me say this for a second. It's not going to be all right. All the white household dollars are go only if you're white and that's it. Only all dollars are going to go towards reparations. It's not going to be that it's America's America in the in full. My I don't want my money to go to Ukraine, but it is what it is. I don't consider that theft. It's sure, but, but again, taking money from one group of people for a political payoff in order to garner votes. Remember, politicians don't do things out of the goodness of their hearts. Politicians do things to get votes. So taking money from one group of people and giving it to another group of people to create a voting block and to ensure a voting block, that is theft. Uh, if you're talking Chris, about what's happening with Ukraine, people, I think it's though. stupid. But again, give on to Caesar what is Caesar's, and I but, pay more taxes. Oh, well, maybe Steph pays more taxes. I pay more taxes than most people in here, and I, I'm fine with whatever the government does with my taxes. I don't care. Like, it, you know, it, it's their money. Um, so what's the, you know, I don't I understand the difference, Chris. I don't want to, I feel like we're giving a group of a money to a group of people who are seeking refugees here to anyways. Anytime, anytime the government gives money to anybody, it is an underline. So there's no difference. It's the same well, exact see, thing. Well, well Dean, that's what you just said. Well, well, not, I hate to interrupt you, but you just, I mean, you just made what, all what more Chris points. Said about the division, I mean, you, what Chris said about the division. What Chris said about the division. But what you're saying, but what, hang up, but what you're saying about the division, you just said it. Like, look what's happening. You, you just said, like, the government's, like, pouring out tons of money for all the refugees coming here. What's happening? Are, are wounds being healed? No. It's becoming incredibly divisive, and it is reaching a boiling point. So do that to one more group of people, and then do it to another group of but people. The people of but you, the difference is, is the people that are in this country deserve it compared to countries that have nothing to do with the fabric of how America was built. Like we have Chris's family money. has nothing to do with how America was built. My family has nothing to do with how America was built. We got here way after slavery ended. My it has, yeah. but my, I think y'all missing the point. In, Why, in 1899. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, is that the there is money that is still being dollars are still being generated from slavery even to this day. People are still benefiting from it. Maybe who? maybe it should be a corporate tax on companies who have built that. Maybe it could be that. So that so maybe that's tax Nike. So, yeah. So, like, I mean, so, so, so again, this is the problem is, like, again, Steph is right. Giving out people checks is silly. I don't if want If you want to talk about property tax incentives. Checks. Right. So we don't need to, to collect extra taxes to do that. We simply give people property tax incentives like, OK, fine. If you can, you know, if you can show that you are the descendant of 
people that were involved in the, you know, chattel slavery in America. Cool. You don't pay property taxes for the next 50 years. Okay, sweet. Like, let's do that. I'm fine with that. I'm 100 percent fine with that. And I would be fine with that, too, except then who's the arbiter? Like, right, because you have, for example, let's just take what we know and love. We've got Hebrew, like, if you say you can prove, you've got Hebrew Israelites who can, quote, prove that they are the chosen race of God. No one takes them seriously, but I bet someone would if they, like, if they weave a compelling case and people are ignorant and they're like, oh, well, I guess you've proven you're the one true people of God. So it's like you can have all kinds of people proving that they're direct descendants of slavery who— are not and it's just up to whatever arbiter there is is that the state of california they're the one leading the charge does anyone trust a politician in the state of california or a board they set up to be remotely educated enough to figure out what is fact from fiction i sure as heck do not so i mean even if we agree like what chris said that would be fine but how do you prevent all the forgery like again it's like when government gets involved nothing good or, or rarely does any good happen well like what was reagan said like we're from the government we're from here to help that's like the most terrifying words you can hear i definitely agree with that but what i'm saying is is that when chris is talking about the divide when you say when people hear uh when i hear reparations i don't necessarily think checks per se um, reparations can be some of everything but when you say not like Uh, D, you're kind of cutting out, D. Did she get a phone call or something? I don't uh, D, if you can hear us, if you can hear us, we don't hear you. I don't know what happened, but if you can, if you can fix it, come back. You just got really faint. And... <laughs> Is it better now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I just think, I just think it's the language because to me, it's just, to me, when I hear theft, when I know that my ancestors were stolen, it's, it's just, it's, it's, the, maybe it's just a word that's triggering. Maybe maybe this triggered in my emotions and being a snowflake right now. Maybe that's what it is. But you know, I just don't have any like. It's like I well, don't, uh, <clears throat> the atrocities well, of what America does. I don't. It makes you not even care about how people feel about it because nobody cared at that time about how it felt to be to treat people that but way. See, so we can't even has, we well, can't even determine who was. Well, I'm hold on just a second. Right now. I, it's, not, it's just emotion. It's not reason stuff. It's no, not, I get it. But <laughs> we can't even determine who was stolen and who was sold. Right? Like, if your entire argument hinges on being stolen, well, a huge amount of slaves that were, sto- that were sold in the transatlantic slave trade were sold, like, by neighboring tribes. So how would we determine that? Would it really have to be, like, then who would owe the reparations? The tribe that sold you to the Spaniards or like the who would it go there's no way to determine this at all well sold because it, no matter if it was so, you're still stolen no matter how they figured out how to yeah, get by who? You, still stole, you're still but who stole so, who stole who like there's no way to there's no way to tell that but, but the, the the who profited the most from it who who initiated it and that is the the place that was founded by yeah, people who died 400 years ago that, yeah and also there's no way but profit, this, but, okay so if there were two warring tribes as has happened throughout all of human history and one tribe in africa uh conquered another and took prisoners of war as is typical for all of human history and then sold their prisoners of war to europeans then who profited like the the initial takers of the prisoners of, of war were the first profiteers of that transaction. There is no way to determine who owes who what a, at all. And I just to uh, true, well, Jeff. I don't think that's true. America, I, to just say that means those African nations who did what they did was they right, wrong, or different. That's what tribalism is. I understand that concept. However, when you have a a actual like mechanism that is profiting millions and billions and trillions of dollars off of free labor, and that 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 is that is minuscule. The the here have these slaves because we have guns, so I'm going to give you these people instead of you taking my people. Is makes sense. I mean, it's not like I, white America I, came out. Not white America, but it's not like the British or the Spaniards or 
whoever came over there like, hey, do you guys have some people we can buy? No, they came over there in force to take. And if you no, are D, in that wrong. situation. You, oh, oh, wait, wait, hang on, hang on. There's a lot of stuff. I, I Hang on, I got well, it. Let me just catch everyone up to get on the same page again. Ah, hang on, stuff. write it down, write it down. Remember your point. We're going to get right back to you, but there's lots of stuff that's just not accurate. The very first slave came from the king in Africa, the black African king who got the idea when he met white people to enslave his citizens and sell them. The very first slave trader was a black African king. So again, it is in, in, incredibly difficult to say who was bought, who was sold. Not all white, white people did this. Some white people were uh, you know, slavers, uh, others were slavies, same with black people. So that's the first thing. The other thing, going back to what you said, where you said you were triggered, D, yeah, theft, right? Because it's it's a word. Oh, like words that, it, well, okay, well, anyways, for everyone else, like words have meaning. So if theft is triggering because, you know, we, you know, us white devils are crying about, you know, the government stealing money and we're saying theft, which it is. Um, and she's and she's saying, well, in her mind, she hears theft and thinks, well, money's not as important as people. So I, she doesn't like hearing that word theft. Well, there's different calibers of theft. Like, you know, a theft of a person is more than theft of money, but both are still the definition of theft, taking something that's not yours. So it doesn't make one right and one wrong. They're both bad. They're both wrong. They could be varying degrees of wrong, but it doesn't make another one right. Um, anyway, okay, now we're caught up. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> yes, Steph. Nope, that was it. You got it. I mean, there, there's no way <clears throat> to say who has benefited, who has not. Um, there are many, 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 many families. Like you can't do this by skin color. You can't do it by income. You can't do it by location. My family, I can prove just like Chris that none of my descendants ever owned slavery, owned slaves, right? My family came here by way of Boston in the 1600s. And I know who all of my descendants were and none of them ever lived. None of them owned slaves. In fact, I have a great, great, great grandfather who immigrated from England as an indentured servant. So I'm not going to draw a direct parallel there, but it would be like, okay, so do I get a, some kind of get out of jail free card because none, no one, like on one side, I'm an immigrant from Sicily and on the other side, I'm, you know, by way of Boston. And so it's like, there's no, none of my descendants own slaves. We know that. Right. But then the argument becomes, well, because of the color of your skin, you have benefited. Well, how, you know, in the, in the 1960s, my aunt who came from Sicily was discriminated against and couldn't find a job. Like, you know, there, everybody, everybody in modern generations has this, has this similar narrative because our nation and, is young. Yeah. So and, and then a couple, you can't do this. And, and then a couple of things from chat. I'm sorry, uh, like no, someone, I, I missed uh, everything. Oh. Uh, I oh, that's, that's right. That, wait, wait, wait. Uh, hang, hang on one second. Wait, 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 wait. Hang on. Wait, wait. Uh, yeah, D, that's that's fine. We forgive you for missing. You can catch back up. Um, but I, I just wanted to hit some, uh, address some of the people in chat because I don't want them to feel left out. Uh, someone, I'm not looking at my screen, but they mentioned, what about the person who uh, has ancestors who were both um, slaves and slavers? How does that work? Do they transfer? Uh, do they transfer benefits? Maybe not money, but benefits from one bank account to another. And then someone else in chat said, um, you know, like, and, and then so some. And I'm trying to be respectful of the people in chat and address their points, um, you know, to be nice. Um, then the other person in chat said, slavery is still happening today. Why doesn't someone do something about that? And I agree. And it doesn't mean the slavery of the past doesn't matter, even though it was hundreds of years ago. Um, we, we can, I guess, try to, try to talk about that. But also, the more we talk about that, the more current slavery and death, rape, murder uh, is happening right now. Look at forced labor in China forced organ harvesting, the sex trade that's largely coming in through the southern border and Ukraine. So all of this real-time trafficking um, should not be dismissed. Just saying. But the American government is not condoning that. And the act, and here's the other thing. It's not just slavery. From slavery, it went to the Jim Crow laws, which between slavery and the Jim Crow laws, there's a whole bunch of other things. Like, we're like, what, 80 years outside? Like, my grandmother had to suffer through being yeah mine to too <laughs> mine too okay. so why don't i like okay so here's the problem with that right is that when when my grandmother came here from sicily you're breaking you're really 
you're really, really choppy, D. The point is, so you, wait, can't, I have a quick you can't become the, the oppression Olympics is going to be ineffective. This is the problem. This is the reason reparations haven't passed, right? Because all of us are like, yes, let's help people in poverty build generational wealth. Who is mostly in poverty? People in these areas, people in these areas, people of this history, right? So we can say this across a number of different uh, demographics. And, but one of the largest groups that we can say in poverty is urban black Americans. Okay, so why has that happened? We can look at the history of that. How do we fix this? Okay, so that's why I personally want small business incentives, income tax write-offs that are massive and a waiver on property tax, right? I think that would help people build generational wealth and the government can just do away with property tax altogether because it's unconstitutional anyway. But that's a whole other thing. The point is, when you're getting into like, let's give this to specific people and use any argument you make falls apart because there's no way to like, as soon as you go into Jim Crow, well, my, my Sicilian grandmother was affected by Jim Crow too. And so were all three of her daughters, but like they, they fell under the same. So now I'm the receiver of generational poverty because of that. Right. And so I'm the first one who's gone to college. I had to take on my college debt by myself. I had no help from my parents because there's no generation. Like you get into this place where you're like, OK, so do the white people in trailer parks whose great, great, great grandparents came as descendants. They owe somebody money because of their skin color. There's no way to parse this out. So any argument about Jim Crow, about skin color, about benefactors of this, that or the other thing, there is absolutely no way to do it. And what it becomes is a very toxic form of oppression Olympics where all you're doing is denying the suffering of others and it's completely unproductive. That's that's all this there's no way around that. Just waive the property taxes. The end. If I may, if I may, because I've been trying to get in for a minute. Yes, Sean. Yes, Sean. All right. Now when we look historically at reparations, the Japanese Americans received reparations. The Native Americans have received reparations. Is that not a fact? Yes. How did the Native Americans well, receive well, reparations? Let me finish my question now. Then why is it a problem when African descendants of slaves have demand what was promised to them? We were promised 40 acres and a mule. Never got it. So All right, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm get, saying, get 40 I'm acres of mule. And then I'll be, I'll, I'll I would be love 40 acres of mule. Oh, don't say that. Do okay, let me <laughs> finish, let me finish <laughs> so, real quick, to respond to that. Real quick, this is, know, it'll, take, it'll take me 10 know, seconds. Hold on, do you know how the Native Americans got reparations? They got waivers of property taxes, free education at any state university, and incentives to start small businesses. Like, that's exactly, so, uh, exactly I'm saying what, that African descendants should receive the same thing. Okay, we agree, yes. Okay. All right. I think that, but Steph, I think we oh. all are in agreement with that. Like, we don't want a check. A check doesn't mean anything. If we wanted a check, you know, you get on welfare. But we don't want a check. We want actual things that's going to change the dynamic of the wealth system. And and that's that's what I was oh. like. I think you and I are on the same page. But the words of Steph and things like that, when it comes to describing the atrocities of what happened to Black Americans and being able to repay. Uh, them back from what occurred is kind of like facetious. So, so okay. wait, so well, we're going to go back in something? time let, and let, give let, people let, money let, hundred years ago? How does that work? Let, Do we have a time machine? Let, let me just address the theft thing since, since Can I throw really a monkey it. wrench in there? Wait, wait, no, hang on one second. <laughs> D, let me just address the theft thing again since you missed it. I'm saying theft on everything, like, right? Like, it's a different thing. Like, on one hand, it's like, oh, you're saying reparations are theft, but you're not saying this is theft. No, we are saying lots of things are theft. And you said that word was triggering because you're talking about like what well, you're saying, you know, theft of people um, is – so when you hear a bunch of you know, people talking about theft of money, you're thinking, well, what about theft of people? That's more important than theft of money. Well, yeah, theft of people is more important than money, but that doesn't mean theft of money is right. Theft of money is still wrong, so it's just a word. So if it's – if you need a synonym for theft, I'll try to be conscious and use one for – you know, because I like you. Um, but I mean it, it's all still the same thing. So you can have uh, theft of a Snickers. You can have theft – of a million dollars. You can have theft of actual people enslaved from another country. They are different degrees, but none of them are right. They are all wrong. So, so yeah, so whenever we talk about theft, it's not just, I'm not just saying, you know, government taxes are amazing. I just think reparations are theft. I think property tax, like Steph, Steph said, is theft. I think, I, I mean, I agree. Taxation without representation 
is theft. Um, some people would say it is regardless of that, but you know, I can at least get on board with, okay, well, I, I would like, you know, roads probably wouldn't get, anyways, that's a different argument. But yeah, so D, sorry about that word, but I mean, I think lots of things the government does is theft. Um, anyways, I appreciate uh, who wanted to- I that up, Nate. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay, so it makes more sense when you say it like that. It, it, it just was, I get what you're saying. I'm with you. Correct. I think all of us agree with Nate. Uh, who, how the heck, clip that. Um, Omar, is he, is he on the phone? I think he wanted to throw in a monkey wrench. L let me know when he's off the phone, because um, it's never going to show me. Michael, um, do you want to speak on behalf of all Americans and slavery? Uh, it's all a waste. Just nuke everything from orbit. Um, you know, I'm okay with that. I mean, I guess... The only way to be I sure. To, <clears throat> I guess it's the only way to be like, sure, I have exactly. to say, no, please don't. Don't do that. No, don't, don't kill everyone. But, I mean, you know... Let's go. No, it's it, no, it's, it's I, let's, I, let's uh, get on that comment. Yeah, um, yeah no. So I want to take it a, a different angle. So I was re, I was rereading um, some of uh, Christopher Hitchens, um, one of his last books, God is Not Great, and he was talking about um, you know issues around uh, issues around morality, and uh, so I'm curious as, as to your take on this. I, th I, I have an idea of what you, what might be said, but I'm curious. So from, from his, from his perception, and I think, I think I largely agree with it. The idea of having someone come down and pay for our moral transgressions is wrong and part of his argument was that you can't ab absolve someone of their moral obligations right and he, he gives some examples in the book he says you know like if somebody um you know if if uh, if someone commits a crime some type of heinous crime uh you know and, and we see this with um issues with organized crime in the u.s right where, you know, where, where a mob boss will, will do something or order something and one of his cronies will take the hit for him and go to jail, right? I doubt anyone would agree that that is justice because the person responsible still did not pay the price. So the idea of anyone else coming down to pay the price for for our quote unquote moral transgressions. And it gets into a whole different argument because, you know, the, the, the whole idea is, you know, paying for sin. And I don't even think that sin is a thing. So it, it kind of tosses a, a wrench and, you know, adds a whole other can of worms to the whole thing. But the whole idea of someone coming down to pay the price for someone else's um, transgressions. It gets into, cannot, the, okay, so it's. Yeah, can't oh, sorry, be considered a moral act. Yeah, it can't be considered a moral act. Okay, so the explanation is real easy. Of course, you're going to disagree on a multiple multiple levels, but the answer is real easy. And Omar, if he's off the phone, I, I'd like to hear his monkey wrench. Um, but yeah, so for this one, um, it's the assumption that everything is God's. God is the potter, all of his creation, humanity, we are the clay. He can do whatever he wants with it. And ultimately, if you sin against your brother, like if I sin, if I steal from you, if I do something bad against you, yes, that counts for something, but ultimately... All things trace back to God, right? So on one hand, when people want to say, well, the problem of evil, ultimately God is responsible and God causes evil because everything indirectly chase, traces back to God. Therefore, he's culpable. The same argument applies. So you can't use it when it's convenient and then ignore this point, which is all sin ultimately traces back against a holy sovereign God. And that's the full stop. So if someone wants to blame God you know, for, for all evil traces back to him and every bad thing in their life happens, traces back to him. Also, it does with this theological argument. So if I sin against you, Michael, the reason Jesus can jump in and forgive me of my sin against you is because ultimately you are owned and created by God, and all sin done to you is ultimately a sin against your creator, God. Anything done to another person, another thing, another plant, anything evil morally done, morally done or sinned against traces right through them uh, like a blip in the radar straight back to the holy God who owns everything. So that's why it is totally not a moral issue um, for Jesus, the one who's been sinned against, to jump down and say, 
I will forgive you. Just like Michael, if I sin or commit a crime against you by stealing, you know, stealing some of your property, and then you say, you know what? I know we've been friends a long time. You committed an evil against me. Uh, you did a moral, a morally bad thing. You you committed a crime, but you know we're friends. I like you. I think we can get past this. Don't worry about paying me back. Uh, you know I'm not going to press charges. I forgive you. Um, it's like that. So if I sinned against uh, you know your daughter, um, well you don't own your daughter. You may be their parent. You may love them a lot, but it's ultimately I sinned against your daughter, um, not you, because you're not Jesus. Um, so that's the difference. Uh, peace be upon Hitchens. Um, and I, I think you, I think you, I hope you would say I agree with your reasoning. If that's true, you just don't think it's true. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and you 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 said pretty much what I expected you to say, and I think it would be pretty much um, repeated by anybody else. Um, but yeah, like the like because I think the concept of sin in and of itself is preposterous. Um, but yeah, I understand where your, where your reasoning is coming from. And I mean, you would just call sin like a crime. Like if it's not a moral thing, if it's like, you know, something in the secular society, you would just call it a crime. Um, Omar, is he, are you still on the phone, Omar? Or are you, are you back? No, brother. I'm, I'm, I don't know if you guys are still talking about, uh, rip, uh, yeah, you rip you said you had a monkey wrench. Yeah. Yeah. You said you had a monkey yeah. wrench. I'm interested to hear. Yeah. Um, so how does that work for mixed race children? Because I have mixed race kids. Um, how is that going to work for reparations? Because I'm I'm technically I'm Hispanic. Okay, uh, my kids are German Hispanic. So how do how do I throw? How is there any reparations for them? And if so, are they only going to get a portion because of their other side? Um, yeah. How would that work? Yeah, we did talk about that a little bit. Uh, go ahead, D. Okay, so, like, if we're just spitballing here, um, if it's a, um, like, within the last X amount of years, then maybe it is a portion of what um, you would have got if you were not from a mixed-race family, you know, because, I mean, and it's not even about color. It's just about repaying a debt. Because you said that you owe 40 acres and a mule, like what Apostle said. So you, the debt is still owed. So the debt is still is still outstanding. Nate um, owes. No, who said you? You said not. you. Not, you. you. Talk about American, American. When I say you, I'm. I'm right, but which American? But which American, but do you keep going back to which Americans are going to pay for this. The American government is who I'm. The American to. government has no money. The only thing that has money is the American people. The government doesn't just have money. The government gets money from people. And so what we're trying to say is that someone is going to have to pay for it. What Omar is saying is, do my mixed race kids pay for reparations to themselves? That's stupid. Okay, so what I'm saying Thank you. Is, and D, saying how, D, D, can I ask you and, and Sean, can, can I ask you and Sean a question, D? Um, so, okay, let's just go the 40 acres and a mule. That was back then. And how would you say that's addressed um, to make it right? Because back then, there were millions and millions, like tens of millions less people, um, where if the government would have made good on their promise, um, I actually don't know the source of that, but I'll take you at your word. I think I remember something about it in history. But anyway, so if the government would have made good on their promise of 40 acres and a mule, that would have been like very, very small number um, back then. So compared to today, where there are tens of millions more people descended from, descended from that time when those people would have got that, how the heck do you figure that out? Because you can't have tens of thousands of people, uh, tens of millions of people getting those promises. So like you couldn't even scale that appropriately. So what's your resolution? Like if you, if uh, Sean was the one that brought it up, he hearkened back to the original promise, which I guess was not met. And I don't know the reason. Um, how do you fix that? Because you can't honor the original promise, and now the climate activists will never let people give forty, you know, forty acres and a mule because land and and farts from animals are bad. So you're going to have to wage war against them. Like it, there's just like if you want, like if someone wants an actual civil war, like through the climate activists, uh, you know, the protesters, the people that, um, there's just no better way to cause a civil war and division of a country than than to like pursue this route because it's just there's no way to do it. 
So should all of the um, should all of the um, southern states pay the northern states reparations I, for causing I, civil yeah, war? The northern states are at fault too because they dealt with Jim Crow. But the northern oh. states laid down an enormous amount of blood and treasure to free slaves. Do we well, ignore that? Is that just that's, is that just nonsense? Is it just like all those no, people died in the Civil War to free slaves nonsense. because what? They're just a bunch of racists? Really? No, it's nonsense to believe that the that the North went to uh went to war because of slavery. They didn't go to war for that. They wanted to unite the United States. It wasn't because of slavery. And that's what they've been teaching us. But that's, that's not literally true. a they KKK to that talking to point. The propaganda. The yeah, case. like that's not, I don't think we want to take the, the conversation they wanna, that way. They not, can I address it after way. her? Go ahead, Tish. You can, okay. You can, go ahead. Yeah, go Here's ahead, Tish. I'm a Christian. I don't know if anybody else on the stage is a Christian or not. Everyone but so, one. Okay, so I'm just going to say this. I have, I grew up in the Midwest. I have probably been the only black girl in a lot of my schoolings and in college, okay? What I will say this, I have mingled with a lot of white Christians, okay? What I'll say with this is I have, there is a big difference between black Christians and white Christians, and it should not be that. And I'm only saying that is because this conference, this conversation kind of alludes to a lot of the things that actually is very problematic, right? Like reparations itself, is owed because it's not just because slavery. It's because of everything after slavery. Even we can even go down the line to now. And for someone to suggest, and if we're looking at historically, a lot of the people saying, wow, we need all that, they were the people who came over here that they were the immigrants that came over here that benefited from the slave, the, the slave trade, just period. And amongst a lot of other things. And so it's very problematic that people's like, why, you know, why do we, um, why is that debt owed? If we look at um, the story of Job, right? He had went through a lot of different things, right? And he had, people told him to curse God and all this other stuff. And he still did right by God, right? In the end, and this is my point, in the end, he got double for his trouble for all the, the trauma and all the things he had been through. Trusting God in the end, he was able to get double portion of him, you know, at the end of it, right? So what I'm saying is, regardless of whether it was a long time ago or not, that still, you know, equates to that, that you still can get a double portion regardless of how long you suffered, right? So to me, it's, it's, it's almost disingenuous to people to say, well, you know, why is this and this is civil war and all that? Because if because if people don't like it, they're uh, it's about lineage. It's not about race. So I just want to throw that out there because I heard people say something about they have a mixed kid. It's lineage. It has nothing to do with race, right? Well, I'm a free I'm a free man, America, right? American. So mm -hmm. that well, means, that's well, well that's ahead, kind of sorry. the thing. It's a it's about lineage, right? If you want to take it about lineage, like do you have any white ancestors or do you have any black ancestors who were part of? You know, being slavers, not slaves. But you're missing the Like point. I have black. I, it's not about race. Well, hold on. I, I, well, I haven't made my. I haven't made my. Point. <laughs> Isn't that, so I mean, I have white. In, I, I have black ancestors in my lineage far back. Like, you know, am I owed reparations? Like, I look white as a driven snow. But I mean, I guess I have black ancestors. So if I can prove that any of them were slaves, then someone got to give Nate some reparations. And, and there's no way to prove that. And the biggest thing is we want the government to do this. What's going to happen if they approve like bill, hundreds of billions of dollars for reparations, all the people owed reparations, which by the way, no one owed reparations is going to get it in their lifetime. I guarantee it'll be like by the time you're dead, but whenever you're like trying to prove, this is how I trace my lineage. This is how I prove. This is how I prove what I owe. This is how I prove this. You'll be dead before it's sorted out. And what's really going to happen is, oh, $500 billion allocated towards reparations for, uh, you know, the slavery and everything that you said, Tish, that has befallen uh, people since then, not just slavery. Um, great. Um, why is my check $10? Oh, we sent the 80% of it to Ukraine. Sorry. Like, that's exactly what happened. Like, more more than reparations. So it's not like, and I, what you said, you can get a double portion. So it's not even about money, right? Like, I, I mean, I 
it's it's easy for people that have a lot of money to be like, screw it, take it. I don't have anything. You, you want a hundred bucks? I got that in the bank. Great. You're going to take all my money. Um, so it's not even that. It's one hand, it's the principle of it. Is it owed? And if someone especially tries to come at this from a spiritual angle, like it's owed spiritually, that's absolutely antichrist. If someone tries to be like, are you really being serious right now? Wait, 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 wait. If someone tries to say it's owed socially, if someone tries to say it's owed socially and secularly, then we can have a reasonable discussion. But I fall down on the side of, of no, for the reasons we've talked about in the last two hours. And then the last thing I'll say is if someone, um, I forgot the other point. It doesn't matter, but, but yeah. So spiritually, no socially, we can talk about it, but I still come down on no. And then, Oh, thirdly, I don't trust the government to do anything. So even if I agreed to it um, on principle, which I don't, I just don't trust the government to be the arbiter of this. So do you believe that the Jews should get money for their atrocity? Which one? They had a lot of atrocities. In general, do you believe that they should get um, reparations or a restitution for that? I don't. Yes, the generation that was impacted got reparations. Okay, so then what is the difference besides the actual... Because you people. were never and a slave. I point because I did not, because I did America not interrupt nobody with, at all. America had nothing to do Can with I the Holocaust. finish, please? And then I'll just let anybody have it. It's, this is the problem that people have with Christianity, right? People go and they say, well, God is so good. And then their lifestyle does not line up with anything that, with anything that, first of all, being long suffering, having grace, all those different things that you're supposed to have the fruit of the spirit, right? And then so they come and they speak and all I hear is venom, basically, to suggest or whatever that because you what you're you the comparing that to spiritual is like antichrist, that is insulting, honestly. Because everything that's happening right now can be contributed to what happened in the biblical times, right? But it's just to me, it's disingenuous to say that because if it was all that, if you don't want to pay for it, you do have a lineage. Your lineage will tell you where you're originally from. If you do not like it, you can always pack up and leave and go back to your original country because this is the, this is the thing. If, if, if it happens or if it doesn't happen, right? But because the push of it happening, people are now getting mad and showing their real true colors. It's like you would not be in this country had it not been by force. So to tell other people that, oh, it's not going to happen is this and that, that is disingenuous. And honestly, I would even suggest or even think, is this person really filled with the Holy Ghost or really, are they really a Christian? Because to me, it doesn't sound like it. Are you saying that if people are against cash reparations, they're not Christians? I'm not saying about cash reparations. And that's, and that's the problem. When I, every time I hear a white person speak of that, I was like, oh, about the money, 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 money. Do you know that black women are dying more than any woman in any country during childbirth? Um, that's not true. What are white women doing about that? know that that's a silly statistic that only an ignorant person would have that, right? So the reason that black women, hold on, hold on, hold on. The reason You didn't let me finish my point. No, um, because, because you said something erroneous. The reason that black women are more likely to die in childbirth is because black women are also more likely to be in poverty, and people in poverty are less Bingo. likely to seek prenatal care. Are you really being That's serious? What, Do you know uh, Serena Williams, Beyonce, and another hold on, celebrity hold on, hold that on. almost died black, giving birth? So what's right, that? so the Serena Williams case is really interesting, right? Because she didn't go back to the hospital to seek the care that she needed. Awesome. Right, so so this is, this is it, it's an actual, it's an income problem, and unfortunately, Correlation does not always equal causation. The people who are most in that income bracket happen, the women mostly in that income bracket happen to be black, uh, but it's actually people in poverty don't seek prenatal care. That's- you, It's so, false. No, 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 it's not false. So, it's false, so this I'm is a black actually, woman. I'm a black woman, how are you gonna tell me it's false? I see I that you're, I can that see is, in yeah. here that you're a black woman. And I believe I you when you say that. Hold on, standpoint of, standpoint wait epistemology, wait a minute, wait a minute, standpoint, standpoint of epistemology, standpoint, standpoint of epistemology. Chris. Okay. I also am a woman. I have given birth three times and I almost died twice. Okay. The second time I actually only survived because someone happened to tell me to watch my blood pressure when I left. That can happen to anybody. But the reality is that because of my demographic and my income level and the education I received from my parents, 
I knew to go back to the hospital. That's the, you're painting it as though there are evil white doctors looking at black women in labor and going, ha ha, I learned in the 1950s that your pain tolerance is higher, so I'm not going to give you an epidural. Ha 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 ha. It's, it's a false, it's a divisive narrative and it's nasty. What we need to do is address the real problem, which is that women in poverty don't seek health care. And so you are correct. The largest amount of women in poverty, particularly for prenatal health care, black, it's, it's a higher risk for them. It has nothing to do with racism. It has everything to do with income demographic. Now, if you want to go back to why, why is the highest number of women in, in childbirth and poverty black? That's a different question. But don't use that statistics to paint some nasty, evil, divisive picture. I'm just not going to sit here and let you do that. But you was lying anyway. So, I, I mean, I don't expect a white person to have any sympathy All right, I'm about done. black people. I'm done with that. Anyway, her. because oh, it's, 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 at the end of the day. Okay. Okay. So, so, again, the, the, the racist okay. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. One of the points you made was about all this, like, all she hears is venom and vitriol. The only venom and vitriol have been, I was going to say from Young, who is still in chat, talking about white people are racist because we won't let him on stage because he's black. No, there's plenty of black people on stage. It's because I asked you a couple times and you can't keep from stutter stopping your speech and speaking like 10 minutes for everyone else's three. That's the reason. Not because I'm a white supremacist and I'm literally KKK Hitler. Um, it's because of those reasons. And I was going to say he's the only one that did that. But now there's Tish or Trish or whatever. Like, you white people, what the crap? Like, all we're doing is giving factual-based arguments. By the way, just like all the other black people are doing, it's not like we're a monolith. Like, all the people here are, you know, except admittedly Dee was a little emotional at one point. But she, she, you know, is, is better now. But, I mean, we're all having a reasonable discussion. And then you're just like, you know, white people, blah, blah, blah. What kind of racist trash is that? This is where I think a, a very holy spiritual person, I'll just parrot them because I'm not that. I try to be. Repent uh, and believe the gospel and let Jesus heal your broken heart. I, I think that's the right Christian answer. Their, their requirement. Because, good Lord, that is infuriating. What, Chris? Go ahead and speak, Chris. We've got you off twice. Nate. Their requirement is that you agree with them. Anything other than that. That's not the case. That's not the case. No, no. It's not the case. You you don't. It's not the case. Um, Can I just say this as. Okay. As, uh, I just wanted to say this. So, it's a, so it's a very thanks hot. for interrupting. So I'll, I'll you, re-interrupt. You're speaking, so. you're speaking. You don't even know. You don't even know. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Know. Stop, 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 stop. Uh, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. I like the name. That's funny. I recently heard it. Um, uh, and, and D, yeah, we'll get to you. I dropped you because you immediately come up and you're like, they require they agree, that you agree with them. So I don't know if you misspoke or meant that, but that's the same thing Tish did, categorizing all white people. And you just kind of came out doing that with all black people. So, you know, I'll just bring you back up maybe in a little bit. But, Dee, we'll hear you right after Chris. We've, Steph and I both cut Chris off twice. Chris, please give us your uh, wisdom. We would like to hear you. And then, Dee, we'll get to you. Look, I, all I'm saying is that on full display here is exactly what Dr. Bauckham wrote his book about. It's called Fault Lines. It's excellent. Um, it's a quick read. Gives a little bit of his biography. Uh, Vody Bauckham, who is an African-American gentleman, is literally my favorite preacher, um, you know, and has been. Uh, Dr. Conrad Mbewe is my favorite, pre- is is my second favorite preacher. So, like, these two guys um, are real solid on this stuff. And what we're hearing right now, again, is a propagandistic um, attack on the church as if the church is promulgating racism when that is not the case. Is racism a huge problem? Absolutely. Is racism an institutional problem? No, that's a Marxist construct. Um, Is racism a problem of the human heart? Absolutely. We've seen it on full display here today. Uh, D. Okay, so let me say this. I don't think Tish is racist. Did she say some lingo that came off racist? Yes. I think what happens is that- That was racist. Steph, let me just finish. For for the record, I didn't call her racist. I said what she said was racist. Because I don't know her. I I agree. I don't think that you called it. But just for perspective. So 
the historical nature is when you don't feel like you you are heard as a black person, you automatically assume that that's what it is. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. But it's it's like, hey, like listen to what I'm telling you. I don't think anybody out here cited any sources about um about their numbers and their statistics. Everybody said it's been said or da 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 da. So nobody has cited any source. It only came from a perspective of what they read or what they think. So no one has the higher uh, ground in this situation. I've heard that black women are, um, through, like, reading stuff, I heard black women are um, are not treated well in the doctor's offices when they're pregnant, and it's not necessarily has to do with poverty, because I know a lot of black women who have who are in poverty who go to the doctors on, on and I know that's anecdotal, but it's, like, not my experience. So I understand that Steph has read something different. I, I'm not going to take that away from her. But it just when when you're a black person. Did and you, you just feel get real like, static for anyone? Uh, again? Oh, man. No, you're good. You're good. Go ahead, okay. Dean. You're good. When you're, when you're a black person and you don't feel like you're being heard, you just think about, why am I not being heard? Is it because I'm black? These are, and I know that maybe y'all don't understand that perspective. I'm not even trying to say it like that, but that's what we think. It's like, is it because I'm black you don't understand me? Or is it because you don't feel where I'm coming from? Do you not under, it's like, can you put yourself in my shoes and have empathy? I think these conversations have to be heard, even though we may not like the lingo. Um, I didn't even know that why was about to say something. I just felt like he was about to say something crazy, and I just feel like a man shouldn't speak for a woman in the first place. So, you know. I'm yeah, real quick like, on that. Wasp is a known <laughs> racist on this app, oh, and okay. I strongly recommend that we remove him from the room. I, I know that guy, and he's not, I would not let him back up on the stage. So okay. whatever he has to say, I don't care what it is. Like, okay. But then, D, I have never, D, you've been in this room, and we've had hard conversations, right? And you've been very respectful and your self-control is much higher than mine. And your level of patience is much higher than mine. And I have respect for it. I have never heard you say, I don't expect a white person like you, Stephanie, to blank. Like, uh, to oh, she said, I don't expect a white person to care. Like, that is the nasty, like, of course I care. I want the problem solved. I, in my PTR, are just two quick sources about the statistics of prenatal care. Right? This is what it is. What do I want? I want all women to survive childbirth, which is dangerous. What do I see the problem is? Low income women are more at risk during childbirth because of why? Lack of prenatal care. What's the solution to the problem? Make prenatal care accessible to all women. This, as soon as we bring race into it, now we're not gonna get the problem solved. The problem is income. Like the problem is, it's like, this is a huge problem. It's a prenatal care problem. And so if we want to actually solve these issues, we have to be honest and shed. I have no dog in this fight. Like there's, I, I'm done having kids. It's not like I'm over here being like, well, I want the better care than the black woman next to me. So I'm going to fight for white people to have better care. No, I want the problem solved. I want my friends who are black women to deliver healthy babies and survive. That's what I want. I want everybody to have that. So we have to look at where the actual problem is and drop all of the rhetoric around it. And it's uncomfortable and it's it's hard to do. But the conversation about like, well, black women this in childbirth, well, you're not gonna solve the problem that way. It's going to remain a problem. Does that make so, sense? It makes sense. But let me let me let me give you an example, Steph. It for me when I um so they say, you know, um black people can't don't need voter ID to vote. You know how they have that aspect of black people are struggling to vote because they don't have voter ID. Like I feel like it's that same kind of concept. It's erroneous. Like, who is making these statistics? Like, I was a young teenager when I had my first child, and I got on welfare, on Medicaid. And I know many young black girls who had just as easy access to grab Medicaid easily without even needing their parents. And you know what I'm saying? And so I just feel like, I, I just feel like, who does that statistic benefit? And when and to me the statistic benefits the doctors because hey who is going to be sued if this happens you know what I'm saying it's to me it's just like the voter thing like black people don't, can't get voter ID so we don't need voter ID it's I feel like though and maybe that's a false equivalent but that's how I see it I know people who are young who are in poverty who get Medicaid easily they they hand it out like candy when yeah like me right. So like it and for and they and there's a statistic that says black women are the most educated women. So it to me it it's a contradiction. If we're so educated, how come we can't get Medicaid? We can read a book, but we can't 
grab a Medicaid application. So I, that's why when I'm saying this, it's like I don't feel like that is a genuine – I'm not going to say a genuine – I'm not even calling it – I'm not saying you're giving us false information. I just think that the information doesn't match to the reality. Maybe it was in a certain area or something, and the sample was small. But I don't know black women for not having Medicaid and going to doctor's appointments on a regular basis. And most of my friends were like 19 when they got pregnant, you know. Well, so, so the, the pro- just to clarify that statistic, the problem actually has to do with locations of medical care and public transportation. So you'll see the same exact problem happen in urban areas as you do in low income urban areas as you do in low income white areas, which tend to be affordable housing and trailer parks and that kind of thing. You see the same problem, that women don't have easy access to public transportation or don't have easy access to an, a doctor. And especially in rural areas, it's hard to find a doctor who will take Medicaid. I've been on Medicaid for five years. I love it. Best insurance I've ever had. But sometimes it's hard to find a provider, right? It and was just some good time. insurance, girl. You ain't have to worry about nothing. <laughs> I know. It's amazing. <laughs> I'm going to lose well, this year. Yeah. It stinks. Oh, well, yeah. Before we get sucked into, like, you know, maybe birthing in, like, Lamont last year. Um, just to back up to one of the things you said, Dee, to, um, to give you some solace, um, you said it's a tendency among some black people to think that in these conversations, you know, white people don't listen. Um, you know, I heard Sean on that 40 acres and a mule thing, and that, that I think I heard that. He brought that deep down from somewhere that I remember hearing that. That's a good point. I, I, I actually want to look in the history of it, and, you know, if the government made that promise, why didn't they fulfill it? And if they made that promise, then that should be fulfill, fulfilled. Um, how to go about that is not what we're talking about, like reparations as commonly understood today. But, yeah, they should be held accountable. So whatever promise they made, if they didn't fulfill it, they should be held accountable to fulfilling it. Um, so if that means tracking down the, like, their DNA, the most, the, the, the most direct and uh, descendants, of the people who those promises were made to, uh, however they have that system in place, if they never got a system, get one. Uh, so yeah, they should be held accountable. Um, promises made, make them keep them. But that's definitely not the way that you know people commonly understand reparations today. How they think they're going to get like a million dollars a piece and a free house. I, but um, I don't, that is I don't definitely think, not the answer. I don't think the black community thinks that that's what's going to happen. I think they're well, more well, so okay. on. Well, well, deep. And maybe that's the maybe well, that's well, the difference. Well, well, let me give you a fact. So, you know, in California, was it San Francisco? That's exactly what they think is going to happen. Like, did you see? I the think the bill? West Coast is just a little <laughs> crazy. <laughs> well, well, yeah, but I, I'm saying. So, I mean, right now, California as a state is entertaining like uh, 375 thousand to a million dollars. Um, and it was, I think it was San Francisco or San Jose. I think it's San Francisco. Um, they had city council meetings with all these black people getting up, expressing like gratitude over their government. It's public. You can look it up where they thought, I believe it was $5 million. They were going to, uh, they were trying to support residents of San Francisco, black people getting. So when you say you just want no property taxes and incentives, um, you are in the extreme minority because most people, um, when we get into reparations, that's where this conversation is going. To millions of dollars, you know, G6, Live Large, Five Cars, that type of thing. Yeah, I um, I think California is a very extreme case. Um, but here's the thing, like, in any negotiation, you ask for the world so that you can negotiate to reality. So, um, and, you know, I'm not saying that there are people who are not wanting a check, but I know more educated people who know that money and wealth is built in property. So, you know, I know a lot of people who's coming from that perspective. We don't want the education and we don't want the checks because with the checks comes inflation. We want the property. You know, we want to be able to have wealth be it that way. Um, I did have a, a monkey wrench I wanted to throw in there, but I forgot what it was. It would have been real funny, though. So, I mean, like, again, I don't think anybody has a problem with just saying, like, look, we're just going to blanket that, you know, all African-Americans don't pay property taxes for the next 50 years. Like, I'm cool with that. I don't care. Cool. I'm all for any tax cut. Yeah. Uh, Steph, 
other Steph. Steph Renee, what's up? Hey, how are you guys doing? Uh, Four to five a minute. Time. How are you? <laughs> I'm actually pretty great. Um, I just recently found out that Marianne um, Williamson, she's actually said that she was she was Jewish, and I did not know that. And she's actually for reparations. And she, I posted a link in the chat, and she broke it down. And she said that slavery has been going on for longer than this country has been even a country. And she broke it down and said that this, that's number one, it's this country's original sin, and we must not only atone but amend. And she broke it down with such excellence and precision. So I posted that to give a white person, a white perspective, which I think is very important. And I even live what? in a Jewish what? community. Huh? So why, like, why is it important after, for me to get an understanding from another white person? That's something called the standpoint of epistemology. Because somebody's because got me, your mic. Let me finish for you. Because when you when you hear from me, you're gonna always assume that I'm coming from a uh, what victim mentality. So you're always going to try to shut me down. However, what you're not going no, to do that's a racist thing to. that you just said. Oh, and you continue. You just so said you something virulently you racist. You're just talking no. over me. You won't even listen, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, because about. you're a racist. That is exactly what I'm talking about. I don't about. listen to racists. Mm, oh, did I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I? I don't know what they went. Listen wait, wait, wait. Hang on. I, I, wait, do we have the, do we have the mute all button here now? I did like that about fan base. You hold the mute and mute everyone. That'd be great. Okay, so how do we navigate going forward? Because what the other person said, uh, you know, like Tish or whatever, was like overtly ra a racist thing, and she was like yelling and screaming. Um, how do we separate that from inevitably when someone's like, oh, you know, whenever I was talking, and you know, from your perspective, and you're like, what do you mean you're like everyone? Um, did so, you like, did you what, see how what, I didn't what, get to finish my sentence? That's and I want I mean. you to, I, I, and I and I want to hear what you're going to say. I'm just saying, in the interest of like a good faith discussion, what's the threshold for every time someone maybe says you or your or generalizing someone, um, to not throw a stop in it and have a big like you're racist, you're racist. I don't know the answer. Like, is it just like I have a, 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 I have a threshold? So, for instance, how can he say that I'm quote unquote racist when I mentioned Mariana? Williamson from that perspective. So if I speak about no, a white was, woman's point of view who is Jewish, how am I racist if I'm talking about her from her perspective? Can I have right? a point how of is that well, order right quick? Can I get a point well, of order? Name? This, yeah, I'm trying to do the point of order. I'm sorry I'm driving, so I have road noise and stuff too, so I'm trying my best. But th this is why you said that, because you're like, because you're not going to hear anything I have to say because you're going to think it's coming from a victim mentality while I'm sitting here thinking, I've been listening to people who are black all day long agreeing with some of the points they're saying so how is it me or chris or any white devil is not going to listen to someone with a, a quote black perspective just because we're um, white. i never so, yeah, said a little... white devil i never said a white devil i, I don't use that no, term. That's, i never that's said my that words. That's, no no that's my words you said we're not gonna, we white aren't going to understand from a black person's perspective and that was the that was the thing that threw him off and had me like taking it with a giant grain of salt but willing to let you continue um, to see where you were going, but anyways, that's what caused it. Okay, can I and the very can fact I just that he would let me... Go ahead, go ahead, go give ahead. me two seconds. I'm about to yeah, help Steph, this conversation off. Wait, can wait, you Steph, take... Steph, finish your point. Wait, wait, David, hang on. Steph, please well, finish your point, say, and then Z. Z can go ahead. Go ahead, Z. Go ahead. I'll wait. Okay. All I was going to say is, take it as if when an atheist is talking, and we don't agree with what the atheist is saying, but we're just hearing their point. You know what I'm saying? We don't agree with anything that comes out their mouth, but we're hearing them just to hear the perspective. Don't take the words, don't take the words to heart. Steph is not a, she's not a racist. Even though what she says may be triggering, it's just like when I thought that the word Steph was triggering. Don't let the words trigger you. Just take it as if she was coming from like an atheist perspective, where we just hear them out to see their perspective, how they see things, and then have the conversation. That's we still love I you, Michael. <laughs> I feel very triggered. Go ahead, Steph. Okay, and that's what I'm saying. You can feel triggered by Marianne Williams, so you don't have to feel triggered by me because those are her words and not mine. So now you can feel triggered by I'm your um, fellow. I'm joking. Oh, she, okay, was okay, I'm that to, sure, she was saying that to. She was saying that to Chris. Not, Michael is our resident atheist. The joke was directed at him. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I'm not triggered because I don't get. Triggered. All right, all right. Go I ahead, think Steph. triggered is a silly term. Go ahead, Steph. Yeah, I, I think the guy he was just interrupting me, and obviously I had a soft spot because he kept interrupting me, but calling me racist. But yet you can't even just listen to my full. Point. Can we move on? 
Yes, I was. I didn't even get to make my point. That's what I'm saying. He's calling me names, and then I'm just making a general standpoint. Yes, reparations do have to be made, and Mariana was saying that we have to not only atone but amend for that because clearly, right after slavery, the slave owners received reparations. So why wouldn't the slaves receive reparations, right? So let's look at the full picture and break it down and understand it point by point. So that's my point and perspective. And we're going to take our time and work through this all together. I don't care if you're an atheist, a Hebrew Israelite, you consider yourself Jewish, Muslim, whatever, whatever. You still have to acknowledge that that is America's original sin, period, point blank. So, Stephanie, can you point us to a historical document where someone... Um, paid reparations to slave owners um i'm driving right now i'm driving right now i can't but you can certainly google it if you if you have it if you don't know that then you can certainly google it so i i do actually know that there were no reparations paid to slave owners that was one of the major points of reconstruction if you study u.s history at all and so like so 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 the the idea that you know, the one group was paid reparations and another group was not is just simply ahistorical. No, okay? she's right. Um, Lincoln signed a bill in 1862 that paid $300 for every enslaved person who the slave owner lost. In this right. Country. And how many of those people got a payout? I don't know. Did that bill not go through is what you're saying? Correct. Like, Wait, again, so the part thing? of Reconstruction is that slave owners were not compensated for their free slaves as I think was right. I don't think they should have been compensated for their freed slaves. That's fine. But my point is, is that it is a historical to say that slave owners received reparations after the civil war or during it again, 1862, you know, that's the middle of the civil war, you know, like that, this is simply, this is simply a historical. And so what I'm trying to say is that we need to bring the temperature down. We need to check our facts because what happens is that all of this discussion is surrounded by propaganda and the propaganda from people like, you know, Cardano is just as toxic as the propaganda from people like, uh, you know, Robin D'Angelo and, uh, you know, all of the, uh, all of our, our, uh, 1619 folks, things like that, like all of that. Uh, again, that video stuff, I did check it out. It is completely based on a history that no historian takes as accurate that was presented in the 1619 project. Again, the 1619 Wait, project is but a we do history. know, but Hold the on. point is, we do know that the enslaved people were not compensated, and that's the problem. The problem yes. is that so, that's the main issue. The District of Columbia Compensated Emancipation Act of 1860, I lost it, 1862, um, actually only paid out people who petitioned for the, so it wasn't automatic, and it says that few successfully petitioned. But interestingly, it also played, paid Black and Native American slave owners. Any, like it wasn't skin color, it wasn't a skin color thing. I don't know. Right. That's interesting yeah, because there were Black and American um, you know, and uh, American Indian slave owners as well. And, and here's but the she's thing. right. Look, the slaves were not. She is right. Nobody slaves were not compensated. Absolutely. No, no one disputes that. No one disputes that. Would it have been equitable and a good idea to have compensated slaves like former slaves when they were emancipated? A hundred percent. Yeah. I, I don't think anyone would say that that is a controversial view. Well, maybe, maybe some racist people, but like, I think that what people are objecting to is that we come back 150 years later and we're attempting to right a historical wrong that has been generations and generations um, ago. And it is simply not possible to right historical wrongs. Like there are all kinds of historical wrongs like that, that cannot be righted. It, this is simply being used in the church as a wedge to try and and destroy the body of Christ. It is a satanic attack on the unity of the body of Christ to attempt to divide Christians amongst racial lines. That is what I see. That is what Vody Bauckham sees. Um, you know, this is what the the entire video that I sent that I think everybody should watch in terms of what social justice is, um, what, where it came from, 
um, what are its roots? Who are the who are the people that um, are very important? Like who was Gramsci, right? Um, you know, or not Gramsci. Uh, you know, like the, all of these all of these academics that were involved, and the reason that we're having these discussions now is because it is being pushed by a specific uh, demographic of um, white liberals in order to divide. Um, and, and, and people are jumping on it. Um, and and the, other, the other thing I would say is, if we really wanted to get at reparations, maybe, and, and, and go back to a historical place, um, maybe what we do is we simply take all of the money that is donated to the Democratic Party and we start to redistribute that to purchase property. So every penny that the Democratic Party gets in, we redistribute that because they were the ones responsible for slavery, for Jim Crow, et cetera. So maybe maybe we just go at it that way. So if you're a registered Democrat, you get your taxes up by 300%. I don't know. I mean, that's historically correct. I mean, I still don't know if I'm on board with that type of reparations, but I mean, if it did happen, um, that's probably the, the most accurate way to go about it. Well, the <laughs> of I mean, I was mainly and, joking, but yeah, I mean, so, you know. I don't, I, I yeah, mean, no, so, well, so because the, that's the party that kept it going. Yeah, the, the 40 acres and a mule thing was established during the war, during the Civil War, and then when Lincoln was no longer president, it was overturned. But it was specifically dividing up. So the North had legislated that they were going to divide up these massive um, farm properties of slave owners, and then the slaves who had worked the property would then gain deeds for 40 acres each, or a maximum of 40 acres each. And then the... um, Union Army was going to lend mules for them to start working the property and start gaining some income. So we, I thought it was actually a westward expansion effort, but it wasn't. Uh, they, I had to look it up and see. They were trying to divide the um, large slave owners' land among the slaves that lived on that land. So there's no way to do that now either. I'm not saying it was right that it was overturned. I don't know how those slave owners ended up keeping their land. Uh, what happened there? But Andrew Johnson. There's no way to divide that land up now. I mean, I guess there's a lot of space in the Midwest. You could sort of, I don't know, I, this this should have been done immediately and wasn't. What do we do now? Manifest destiny. Who wants to live in North Dakota? Well, yeah, but so the, the idea uh, was that up, the Southeast had rich land for farming. We can't, like, send people to Kansas and be like, good luck. You know what I mean? And then how many how many people who would qualify for this want to be farmers in the Midwest? Like, there's... I wouldn't. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I yeah. I'm gonna stick with the free, uh, free state college tuition everywhere. Uh, Fifty years of, or ideally forever, of no property taxes. I mean, the property taxes alone would fix a lot of this because if you live in a state like New York, half or more than half of your mortgage is your property tax. So my mortgage is nine hundred dollars, and it is five hundred and fifty dollars a month for my tax, and the rest is my loan and my insurance. Um, so that would open up Except massive th- what there's just so many problems though like how like right. property tax especially for people that live in densely populated urban areas where there's not a lot of property ownership that's that's not even going to touch like an incredibly large swath of people who don't own property um, no so but what it that. would do it would incentivize well, it would well, allow it, people to buy property just to clarify that it would allow people to buy property because if my mortgage is nor- normally 900 I qualified to buy a property for $900 a month because, you know, they do it based on your monthly payments. Now, if my property was only 500 I could buy twice as nice a house. Or maybe if I didn't qualify at all, I would suddenly qualify. So you would incentivize people to move out of densely populated urban areas into more affordable suburban areas. Except look around what's happening, though. Like, with our current, like, like you know, you read the tea leaves. Like, with our current thing, they're raising property taxes so high, and not just taxes that they would be immune from, but as a result, everything is like arbitrarily appreciating in price and that's causing it to be more and more out of people's league. Um, Even people that you would say have some sort of privilege, even they are being reduced to being renters and having to sell their property, even if it wasn't for property taxes because of the uh, false appreciation of value and stuff is going up so much that it seems that it's the 
will of the powers that be to price everyone out of their house so giant conglomerates can buy up property and own all of the land and force people to be tenants. Um, black, white, it doesn't matter if you're not in their group. So it, it just seems like even though these are like well-placed ideas, the powers that be in the current way of things, that is completely diametrically opposed to what they want to accomplish. So that's just never going to happen. And not only is it never going to happen, the people that do have this stuff are increasingly losing this stuff because they're raising these rates and or causing fires in places or floods to burn or get rid of people's property and make it where they can't afford it so they can buy up all the land and either own it as a government entity or a conglomerate organization. Um, but, but, okay, one more thing, and then I'm done. Um, one more thing. Um, whenever we talk about, you know, going from slavery, and then people said, well, it wasn't just slavery, it was Jim Crow, it was everything that happened since then. There is, like, you want to talk about how, how impossible it is just to parse out, like, what we've been talking about? When you try to parse out a cause of pain and suffering, that is impossible to do between what is directly traceable to the government and what is directly traceable to anything else. So, like, employers that people have, uh, you know, discriminated against, well, that wouldn't be the government's fault. That would be the employer's fault. And at what time? Was it before non-discriminatory laws were passed? And th so was it before or after that? Um, then it would be a corporation that may not be in business. Who's liable for that? Do they get a pass? And then you talk about, like, the government doing other malicious things, like the Tuskegee experiments or injecting, you know, a bunch of, like, black people with, like, messed up viruses or syphilis or trying to, like, you know, ramp up prison sentences and get black fathers out of the home. Is or that sterilizing because of racism? Puerto Rican women. Yeah, is right. that racist, and or is it also because they they want um, you know starting with the black family because they saw that as a target because of all the other historical stuff Jim Crow all the way back to slavery they saw them as a a target to start with first so get the black men out of the house that doesn't mean black people are bad that doesn't mean black families are bad they just saw them as a target because they were already a target so now they put black men in prison and that causes black families to suffer and in turn that causes the community to suffer and then it branches out and spreads to like every other race like you know Puerto Ricans who uh, who came to the states or uh, Hispanic families and then it branches out to the suburbs and you know inner city white people and suburb white people anyway so it's just such a rat's nest of what is racism that should be reparations because of slavery and or Jim Crow and all the way up to the, to, to the traditional stuff based on completely other races slash dominating factors that the government did that was also an atrocity against black people. That wouldn't have to do with the slave reparations. That would have to do with a whole other like issue um, that's still egregious. And then you add all the other races. So it's like there is no stopping, not to mention, like Lou already pointed out, the slave trade today, like, by the time we even start to make a dent in, like, black reparations, then it's like, okay, well, now we've got hundreds of millions of sex, traf sex traffic victims, um, you know, coming in through our, through our southern border. Our government is complicit or organizationally operating that. They're absolutely at fault for that. So we may all just invade Canada because if this goes the way and sets the precedent for reparations, they're never going to be done. We will not have any like any money. I don't know if a fourth world country exists, but by the time we're done doing that and paying for all the current sex trafficking the government is complicit in and non-governmental organizations are partnered with, we will be a crater in the earth. And Michael, get ready because we're coming to invade Canada. Just leave Sorry your guns behind. They're not, just leave your guns behind. They're not welcome. Viva Trudeau. <laughs> All right, does anyone question. have anything to say? Uh, we got like five five minutes, and then I got to run, and I'm going to close the room because there's no way I'm leaving this open. <laughs> uh, Felix, yeah. I was just going to say, where is Thomas Saul when you need him? Oh, yeah. Uh, Steph, you have anything quick to say? We'll get some final thoughts. Um, no, I, and, and Steph, Renee, I did. Um, and I'm Steph, Renee, question. yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I was busy, so I backed down. What were you saying? I asked if you had any final thoughts. Oh, sure. I mean, well, what we're going to do, if, if whatever it does, it's going to happen, and we're going to take our time to work through it. That's what I'm saying, because there will be atonement and amends made. So we can always talk historically. Even during Obama's administration, there were reparations paid to the Jews. If that happened in Germany, why is the U.S. paying for reparations to the Jews? doesn't make sense so whatever it is whatever it's I never got it's a check. done well uh, I never got it, a check. it was paid it was paid so uh, 
what, Malik? I never got a check. And moreover, there was a white, I posted another link in the chat and there was even a white pastor who said that yes, slavery was the white man's blessing. And basically um, mocking uh, who he was um, speaking with, which was an African-American Christian hip hop artist. And basically very talk, talking very down to him and had this sort of mentality, uh-uh, no, we're gonna figure it out. It's going to happen and it will happen very soon. So we just got to figure it out. Even if whatever it takes is gonna happen. Okay, and I if, want and if people to resist, then we can round them up and put them in little camps and give them, you know, shared bedrooms together and it'll be great. And all, all those right. people that just refuse to take part in what will happen, we can make sure that we can round them all up and put them into re education. What do you mean by that? What, why no, are you so offended at the possibility? Wait. Chris is an equal opportunity, angry, you know, that don't, don't, don't even. Uh, here's the thing uh, I want to put a nice little bow on this. This is a conversation that we need to have because we love our brothers and sisters, right? I love my brothers and sisters that come into this room and that come from all different faith backgrounds and nationalities and family cultures and ages and all of that. Like this room is a rich, diverse place of varying opinions on the topic of Christianity and otherwise. But what we all agree to is that it's important to have these conversations because we love each other. Um, but also we need to keep our eyes on Christ. Christ is the only answer for all of this. And we may think we know what it is, or the other person may think that we know what it is, but we need to prayerfully consider these things. And we need to always let the Lord lead us in whatever it is that we're debating about. So that would be my final thought on this. And I totally Absolutely, agree, I agree with you. And then the Bible was altered to support slavery. So that's a whole Girl, other thing. That there was a whole slave Bible. Wait, wait, oh wait, man, the wait. Bible was altered. Please show us the alterations. I. But you moved her? Stop, hang on, wait, wait, I, I, wait, 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 you moved. stop, 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 yes, I moved her down, stop, stop, I moved everyone down, I don't have time for this, sorry guys, Steph, I don't mean to be, uh, Steph 1 and Steph 2, I don't mean to be rude, I just have to go, so we cannot get in that conversation, the Bible was not altered, it's the same Bible we've had forever, go back to the Septuagint Bible, go back to the scripts Paul wrote, yeah, the Bible has not been altered, it just has not, um, come back tomorrow and we'll have that conversation, um, okay, so, yeah, I, I just have to run, I have an appointment, so I got to close this room. Um, the last thing I'll say is Malik, who is Jewish, and also Mir in chat, um, they claim that the reparations that you said were paid directly to Jews from Obama, they claim that never happened. So it is definitely ardently disputed. Um, anyways, we could continue this tomorrow, or I can just you know drive off a bridge um, and not have to think about it. Just kidding. Don't do that. Don't kill yourself. Um, anyways, thanks for being here. It's a decent enough discussion. So go with Christ. That is what unites. Let's not be divided over stupid stuff. Um, anyways, so everyone, have an awesome day. Oh, my and we'll see you later. Oh, and if you want to bring this fight to Discord, <laughs> go straight to the Chris Fighting channel. Um, you can click on the Discord link at the very top and find out where we always are if this hasn't soured your taste on this room and us. So I, mean, I think it's as good as it could have went, right? We're mostly peaceful. Um, so, yeah, check on that. Check the Discord link at the top, and we'll see you all later. Take care. Have an awesome day. Goodbye. Michael, please.